Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or perhaps good evening, whichever may personally apply to you. Welcome one and all into my wholesome little pigsty, where today we are going to be continuing on with my Dungeons and Dragons adventures that I entitled The Chaos of Fear. Welcome on in, one and all. Today is session number two, and without further ado, let me go ahead and get my t uh, players in. Get on in here, you, you, you filthy animals. <laughs> Hello, Hallmack. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Jin. Hello, Ginger. Hello, Demoven. Hello. Welcome, welcome on in. How are you all doing today? Excited. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, well, I am very excited too. So, um, without any further ado, let me go ahead and begin with a little bit of a recap as to what has all happened to our adventurers so far. In the first session of the Chaos of Thier, Jin, Hallmack, and Demovin all made their way to the um, Adventurers Guild in a small town that, uh, known as Armguard. Um, at the Adventurers Guild, they were given a, uh, quest to go and research about some local bandits and such that had taken up the area. Uh, before they could get too many details, however, a sudden appearance of a, our fine furry friend Ginger over here, a four-legged quadrupedal cat-like slash fox-like slash squirrel-like creature <laughs> that just kind of appeared out of nowhere and started causing chaos. Not knowing what this newfound creature could possibly be, whether a friend, a foe, a threat, or otherwise, the party decided to interrogate said animal, but the animal, being skittish and mistrusting over everybody, was not quick to give any answers. But after a time, the tensions began to fall and diminish, and good quality friendship and kindness soon to prevail, and trust was given, and Ginger eventually joined in the group. Um, Within moderation. <laughs> Within moderation, yes. <laughs> uh, the group was then told further details of the job to which Ginger was um, asked to attend along with, so that way they could kind of get used to the world, get a little bit of money, and plus it's not exactly like they had anywhere they could go anyway, so why not stick with the people that at least were there and understood the circumstances of Ginger's um, sudden appearance in this world. So, agreeing, Ginger decided to tag along, and they were told of this seemingly bandit-like group that is unified under somebody under the name of, quote, Lord Reinar, has taken um, siege on certain trade out routes and such, especially between this two, the two towns of Armguard and Smithson. So um, the team was given um, the the basically the um, that's what I'm looking for here. Sorry, uh, given the task. Oh God, brain, work with me today. <laughs> they were given the task to um, act as merchants. They were given a supply. Hello, ghosty, my love. Enjoy the lurk. Um, they were given um, a, a a supply. Uh, to Smithson of herbs, spices, and various other ingredients um, that Lady Ivy had given, uh, had supplied, um, and they were given the task to deliver the goods, as well as taking care of the bandit gang. Um, they were given 20 gold pieces um, before leaving, and they were told that they would receive 30 gold pieces upon the completion of their mission. So, with their newfound money, they took to the local shops, meeting Lady Ivy, as well as the incredible and fan favorite um, Ruby of Ruby's Rubik's, and also the caretaker of our lovely Jin. 
over there. <laughs> uh, but everybody got to meet and had a little bit of shopping time, and Ginger was also able to discover catnip for the very first time, to which they hilariously failed their wisdom saving throw and found themselves in La La Land for a while. <laughs> uh, recap, I got DC real quick upstairs. Okay. Uh, Jin was also um, given a magical dagger created from the tooth of a green dragon was given to Jin um, by a very, very proud and loving Ruby who uh, was extraordinarily just thrilled and happy that Jin was finally able to get his very first adventurous job and uh, being able to go out into the world and, you know, begin to make a name for himself. So the dagger was given to Jin, but soon thereafter, the, j the dagger just mysteriously disappeared. Um, thanks to the chaos of the world, it was teleported to a nearby lake, to which Demoven more than was happy, well, more than, I shouldn't say happy, but more than willing to volunteer for the job to go and fetch the dagger. To which this actually had no problems, other than it being in a small little cave at the bottom of the lake. Um, but other than that, no other real shenanigans ensued, and the team was able to get their, um, the supply, as well as a supplied cart and horse, and they were, uh, taken to, uh, they began their trip southward to Smithson. However, the travels did prove to be extraordinarily dangerous as a very loud and thunderous roar echoed through the air, local wildlife scattered in all directions as a descending down upon them, upon the party, was a fully grown adult red dragon who declared himself proudly to be the newfound ruler of this territory, and soon everybody would know the amazing name of Gregory the Molten Fury. Despite the team's best efforts to deceive the dragon, as it would seem, to make them seem less grandiose than the dragon was making them seem to be, and try to get them, uh, get Gregory to go and attack some local bandits nearby. Instead, the dragon was not hearing any of it, and attacked the party seemingly foolishly. As the dragon breathed its breath weapon upon the party, the party was hardly even affected at all. Some slightly burned skin, some slightly singed eyebrows was all that there was from Gregory's quote-unquote molten fury, and was soon laid to rest by the party. However, as soon as the finishing blow was struck upon Gregory, the visage was ruptured in a bloody explosion that got Halmac covered from head to toe. <laughs> and while that was actually left was the withered remains of a poor, disheveled half-elf. Or, I'm sorry, was it a half- Was it an elf or a half-elf? I can't remember. I mean, we're gonna say half-elf. We just said- All I heard was the, the, the man. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember if I go out into too many details. That's kind of my problem, is I, I don't describe my um, NPCs as, as I should. So my apologies, I'm actually gonna try and do better on that from now on. But yes, he was a half-elf, um, slightly elderly- you know, shoulder length, gray hair that was just a disheveled mess. Most of it was matted and, you know, kind of fallen out. And I said, Gregory was very poor, very disheveled, but somehow had the chance to tra taste grandness and somehow turned into this twisted fate. Um, but with his um, uttering, uh, with his dying breaths, he was uttering confusion, not understanding, saying that his wish was to become a dragon. And he wasn't sure. He wasn't sure why things turned the way they did. The party, um, after collecting themselves, continued to travel on down southward before the sun began to descend into the sky, and they had to set up camp. Um, overnight, nothing really too crazy happened until the sun began to rise on the next morning. The party did begin to hear you know, some rustling and such in the woods as emerging from the woods, the frame of a small little girl named Emily came to them, crying, disheveled herself, um, very malnourished and hungry, 
her feet all bloodied and torn, saying that she had been traveling through the woods for days, having just escaped the clutches of Lord Reinar. She was trying to locate her parents to tell them that they didn't have to do what Lord Reinar was forcing them to do anymore, because she ran away. And it is there that we are going to be picking up for um, session number two. But real quick before we do, we are going to do a roll for DM Inspiration. These are going to be uh, batches of dice that the party can use in order to try and turn the tides in their favor. However, each character does only get a 25% chance at the, each, at the start of each session in order to win one. Jin, however, does already have a, a, a die of DM Inspiration due to personal reasons. They had already um, gotten one awarded to them. So uh, without further ado, Hallmack, what would you like your number to be? One, uh, two, three, or three. four? Three? I just, I, I just roll in my d4 and just see what happens. <laughs> you actually got it, my friend. It is a three. So go ahead and three. take up a d12 and set that aside and designate that as your DM inspiration. Demo Ven, what would you like your uh, number to be? Uh, two. Two. Uh, unfortunately, my friend, it is a four this time around. I am very sorry for that. Ginger, what would you like your number to be? Mm, one. A one. Let's see. Unfortunately, it is also a four, so I am sorry, Ginger. Hallback, congratulations on snagging up that DM inspiration. And Jin, also, a quick reminder, you have one as well. Um, but thank it is you, with you. that, we are going to go ahead and pick it up where we left off. I will say, Hallmack, Jin, and Ginger, you all did get woken up a little bit early. Um, and so... In order to quote benefit from the um, to be in order to gain the benefits of a full long rest, you will need to have your characters sleep for at least two to three more hours. Um, right now, it is like three or four a.m. Crack of dawn. Hmm. Yeah, it is the butt crack of dawn right now. Um, but um, Emily, having um, to you know, told her story and. You know, explained all that she could to the party. Like she basically gave out less for energy, the adrenaline that she saw a campfire, thinking that it was her parents. Come to find out, it was a group of strangers. But gathering up the courage to present herself to said strangers, um, it, it really took a toll on her, especially after, you know, the previous day's events. Um, and as soon as she gets done telling her story, she basically collapses in Hallmack's arms, I do believe, because it was you, Hallmack, that picked her up because you saw that her feet... I, her I think I picked her up and laid her down on a bedroll from my rough memory, but that was two weeks ago. You did? <laughs> yeah, uh, and you healed her. Yeah, and you used your... Yeah, you did use your Cure Wounds um, charge yeah, have, for the day for that. Yeah, I have marked that as not available for yeah. notes. So, so even uh, with the uh, the next, you know, little bit of sleep, that's still going to be unavailable for the day. Yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to retrospect that because you didn't use Cure Wounds the day before, did you? No, I did no. not. Okay, so we'll say that that was the charge that you used then. As long as Hallmack gets sleep, then I'm going to allow you to get that use of Cure Wounds back. That's fine. Um, But he has to get some sleep. Yeah, he has to get at least two to three more hours of sleep. <clears throat> All right. Hello, pirate well, kitty. Well, my friends, uh, as we're as I'm, we're looking down at this young girl as she's completely passed out on this bedroll, what do you what do you think we should do, my friends? You all should sleep. I can keep guard. All right. Ginger, cool. Jin, what do you think? <laughs> Ginger flops down on the on the bedroll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that answers that question. Okay, I just go up to, Jin? uh... uh mm. Go ahead, go ahead, Almec. Uh, I just, I literally just, uh, put my, put, fold my helmet over my eyes and lean up against, the, uh, lean down next to the tree, uh, tree okay. and just, like, you know, rest. You know, you know, like how Indiana Jones would pull, put his hat over his face. That's kind of what I did with my helmet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jin, and what are you doing? Is my voice working now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Hello. It is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's gonna just go back to bed. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to say Ginger and Jin, um, because you're getting back into your bedrolls, you have no problem getting back to sleep. However, Hallmack, I'm going to need you to give me a constitution check, please. So just uh, take up a d20, roll it, and add in your constitution modifier. Okay. Uh, four and three. Um, quick math. Uh, seven? Seven. Just barely, my friend. Just barely. Oh. So it, it takes you a while. It's it's not comfortable. You know, it's sleeping, you know, uh, leaning up against a tree. It's it's not what you're normally used to. Even if you are sleep used to sleeping on, you know, hard surfaces, you are at least, you know, used to kind of laying down a little bit. But you want to try and at least, you know, seem protective. And in case, you know, uh, Emily wakes up, she might see you, you know, leaning up and such, so you kind of want to seem like you're protective a little bit of, of everything, so you kind of force yourself to, uh, to maintain this stance in a stubborn dwarven fashion, and you just kind of huff to yourself and grumble, and, but eventually you do slowly fall asleep. Okay, are they all asleep now? Yes, and Hallmack, Jin, and Ginger, I'm gonna need you three to go into the waiting room, please. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, no. Alrighty. Demo then. As you look over the uh, the party for a moment, and you get that surge of familiar power and gifts, your form does begin to shape and bend itself back to what you feel is more comfortable for you. And as you're kind of looking down at your arms, your your newfound foliage, your, your feathers, and your, your newfound color again, you start to feel something gently brush up against you, your face, against your body. And you kind of, your heart kind of seizes up a bit. Not, well, not literally, but figuratively the quote-unquote blood runs a little cold in your veins. Because as you take a moment to look around, you notice that it almost looks like there's a fine dust that's falling through the air. Except it's not dust. You t as you look down at your newfound white feathers, you actually see that this dust is brown in color. A golden color and you know immediately what this is this is sand very fine sand and as soon as that realization hits you you hear a voice booming directly above you hello there bird oh it's you indeed have you my payments for this month? Ah, uh, yeah, he's gonna give him, you know, roughly the 30, uh, gold worth of jewels. He takes the pouch from you. His fingers, massive, this enormous stature of a being that almost to the mortal eye would seemingly be made comprised of compacted desert sand dressed in the finest of jewelries and clothings, his teeth all just this volcanic glass looking magical sheen over them like you, you know that this person has made modifications to himself for his own amusements, for his own pleasures and his own embellishments he takes the, the purse from you his fingers just massively taken this small sack from from your outstretched hands and he kind of brings it up to his ruby red gemmed eyes not really but just colored gemmed eyes and they squint a bit and he looks down at you is this a joke it's not the full payment we're gonna go get the rest from this lord reinar guy 
I would hope so. And he leans up, um, kind of, uh, he uh, lifts the, uh, the satch up above his head and leans his head back, opens up his jaw and drops the sack directly into his mouth. And you start hearing that familiar crunching and grinding sound as he literally chews up all of the gems that you had been carrying for the, some time now and just grinds them down to dust and swallows them. Mmm. There's a cup of citrine in that one. Ah, ah. Try to find some more of those. They pop like candy. I like them. Demovin's just gonna tilt his head because he still really wants to know what they taste like. <laughs> He kind of takes a moment and looks over the party, who you now kind of notice have this... You notice that the sand that was kind of flowing over the sky has kind of coalesced for a moment over the other party members' eyes. Even Emily's eyes seem to have this collection of golden speckled sand that just kind of floats around their eyes for a moment and he kind of looks over at them and ponders them for a moment then looks back at you <laughs> let me guess more fools to help you they are beneficial <laughs> I guess we'll see I guess we'll see so when are you getting the rest he, he points over towards, you know, where that, like, tower is that he saw. As soon as we get over there. Well, that should be within a day. I'll be visiting you. See I you wouldn't soon. have it any other way. See you soon. And he just kind of... His form almost just kind of blows away with the breeze like a... Like he was a statue that was just made of the finest powdery sand that just kind of billows away. And as he does, the the golden sand-like um, gathering around the eyes of the party just kind of slowly dissipates. Uh, Demovin's just going to look down and tap his little hourglass, satisfied with that interaction. I'm going to tell them they can all jump back in now. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello. There we go. And yeah, welcome back as well, Jin. Hello, hello. All right, so you all... Hmm. Oh, damn, Oreo cakes. You're making me hungry. Hi, Oreo! You're making me a craving. Oh, Oreo hello, cakes. Oreo. Oh, Hold no. on. We, get, I'm gonna, oh, we, need to get, we need to get a shout out for Oreo. Absolutely for some reason, I actually want or, like, the Oreo ice cream. Everybody go follow Oreo. I will definitely interrupt my story for that. <laughs> okay, so... It has been done. Um, as you all are trying the best you can to gain um, a little bit more sleep um, that you had lost, gain, or regain that slumber that you had lost, um, nothing else really happens. Um, hold on. I'm going to give... See, one, two, three, four. Let's see. I'll give each of you a 25% chance at this. That's a lot of dice. There were so many. Jin. What? When you wake up, you feel like you go up and rub your eyes, and you feel like this little, like, eye buggy, crusty thing. And you go and you pick it out, but when you look at it, it's very fine and dusty. Almost like, and, and it's also like a golden brown colored. Um, give me a nature check. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Um... Okay. Nine. Nine. Actually, it's easy enough. Um, you kind of recognize this substance, um, especially since, you know, there's a 
local source of it um, in your town. This is sand. You know so this. Sandman came to see me. You don't know. So I rub my eye, and I feel the crusties, and I look at it, and I identify it, and I hold it out to Ginger, going, "Hey, look!" Like it's some kind of prize. <laughs> <laughs> it's dirt. What, what do you want? What do you, it's dirt. <laughs> Never mind. I hold it out to Demovin. Look. <laughs> it's as, sin. as you look up at Demovin, you notice that he is bright and vibrant. His musky, dusky demeanor as he looked before is completely gone. All of his feathers, or most of his feathers, are a brilliant white. His eyes glow with a newfound golden vigor, and he doesn't have, like, all of the spots before where there was, like, missing plumage and where a little bit of his, like, little bit of rotted skin had come through. There is none of that. His his feathers are full, they are vibrant, and he looks alive. Dude, you are the epitome of beauty sleep. What the hell? <laughs> I do not sleep. <laughs> what? what? You look amazing. <laughs> Whatever you did, keep doing it. I mean, he gives him two thumbs up. <laughs> I intend to. <laughs> what happened? Anything? Never mind. <laughs> that is probably the best thing you could do right now. I don't know him well enough to <laughs> feel like he could delve in deeper. But he he's still going to... He's very curious about Demovin, so he's going to keep an eye on him, but... Wow, you, you look good. <laughs> he goes and kind of keeps looking over his shoulder as he's kind of rolling up his bedroll and putting stuff away. Is there any more sand anywhere else or is it just in my eyes? Uh, give me, well, do you want to just kind of give it, do like a quick glance around or do you want to um, like get down on your hands and knees and systematically look? Just a quick, like, glancing at my pillow and my bed and... Uh, give me a perception check. The general ground. Mm. Oh, nice. Okay. Eleven plus... Oh, shoot. That's persuasion. Ah. Fourteen. Total. Fourteen. Um, so you don't find any other sand like on your pillow or anything like that around that area per se um but as you kind of like are looking around for a moment there's like a refraction off of something like out of the corner of your eye like the the morning light catches something just enough for you to kind of catch it and you look over and you notice it's coming off of ginger's fur and it's like the fur right next to his, like, um, his good, like the left eye. The good one, not the hurt yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, the good one. Okay. Um, Ginger, you got a little thing there. And, and he's like trying to point at his eye without getting too close or to, because he doesn't want to freak the cat out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just wipes his face a little bit like, what? Uh, right, right, no, no, a little to the left. This liner. <laughs> no, no, right, 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 right there. Almost. A little more. Okay. So as <laughs> you, like, you had to bring up your back end foot, as I could still kind of see, to kind of get that spot, because that's, like, how, like, cats and, and foxes would scratch this kind of area that the, the sand is at. Um, and Jin, as you go, as you watch him kind of, like, scratch at that area, there is, like, almost a small poof of like this sand like substance that comes out almost like a small dusty cloud but as your eyes kind of watch it in the in the morning sunlight it seems to just kind of disappear like just fade away huh. almost like um, a foggy breath or something like that 
Paul Mac. Um, while they are doing this, you kind of get up and stretch for a moment. Um, you kind of glance. I, I would figure your character, kind of being the protective kind of person, would kind of glance over towards Emily, who is still slightly slumbering a bit. Um, can it give me a perception check, real quick? Um, I'm gonna use this dice because I feel more comfortable with it today. Um, twelve. Uh, twelve. Plus, uh, that'll be uh, wisdom, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, perception check will be under like the skills list. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. God damn, I need to make some notes about this. Um, ah, plus three. Okay. Uh, so, 15. Yep. Okay. Um, easy enough. Um, while the ever, like those two are kind of distracted and Demoven kind of seems lost in his own world doing whatever De Demoven does, <laughs> um, you're kind of like, you're concerned over Emily. You know, you, you kind of shut out all of the background noise that's going on around you. And you kind of take a moment to tune to everything in the woods. And as you do, you hear coming from the north, the sound of a distant thunder roll. I uh, look in that direction. I look north if, uh, from what I hear okay. after taking a breath. I basically, I take in a breath and I hear the noise off, off to whatever direction that I was facing and look north and try to take a and try to look uh, into the forest and see what I can see. Okay, uh, looking north, you actually see a, um, a dark cloud that seems to be slowly yet systematically approaching. Like, it seems to be approaching from the north heading towards y'all's direction. It's pretty sizable, doesn't seem like it would be something avoidable, but you are aware that there could be some form of nasty weather coming. Um... I, I quickly I get back up, uh, get my stuff together. I say, guys, I think we got something coming uh, to the north. It looks like a storm or something. I can't really quite make it out what it is. Yeah. It's black. I don't know. I can't understand what that is. Um, yeah, that's why I say. I guess it'd be <laughs> rain. But it's black. <laughs> Whatever it is, it does not look friendly. I don't think so either. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to start loading our stuff into the cart, I guess. Okay. I'm going to help him start doing that. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, so as you all start taking moments to um, gather up the supplies and everything, the forest slowly comes back to life. You snuff out the campfire. And um, as you all uh, begin to start uh, gathering up, you know, rolling up your bed rolls, snuffing out the campfire, um, the three of you include uh, will probably also need to uh, think about breakfast. Uh, Demovin, of course, does not need to worry about such things. Um, but as you all are, like, tending to the horses, making sure they're getting hitched up, um, checking on the supplies and everything, um, Hallmack, um, I'll say yeah. that while you're putting out the fire, like, you're kind of taking, um, you know, your, your hands and, sh you know, digging it into the dirt, you know, some loose dirt next to the campfire and, like, kind of putting, throwing it on top to snuff it out. Yeah, yeah, um, just having my foot on it, you know, just thing that you do to step you out of fire. You hear behind you the sounds of slurping. <laughs> I slowly turn my head while gra putting my hand on my so on my sword ready to draw. Okay. Um, as you turn around, you see Emily, who has her hands cupped together and her face down at her hands. And her hands seem to be flowing with a crystal clear liquid that's slowly kind of overflowing over her hands. But you see that she's got her like lips pressed into her palm of her hands, and she's steadily drinking the fluid. I I I relinquish my grip on my sword and just move, move back to my side as I notice, and I say, "What you got there?" She looks up at you and she puts her hands out to you. She's like, "You want some?" I'm a waterborn. A what? Waterborn. 
Uh, give me an Arcana check, Hallmack. Actually, anybody, uh, everybody in the team can do this, because you all can hear. So everybody give uh, me an Arcana, Arcana check. Arcana. Uh, I rolled an 11. Okay. I rolled a 4. <laughs> You're just looking up at the clouds, uh, Demovin. I'm more just looking at myself. Oh, you're just still admiring the... Okay. <laughs> a 19. I'm not nice. even from this world. What the fuck? 13. 13. Okay, but so... You kind of got a crash course when you landed, so... Ginger. Literally. You <laughs> have heard them talk about everybody is born with magical abilities. You've also heard discussion of these different types of borns in this world. Um... It's kind of like an astro astrological sign, as it were, in this world. In that, basically, depending on what type of magic you were born on, in, born with in this world, could determine various traits. Um, Jin, you're understanding this as well. Hallmack, you kind of get the gist of what's going on, but you still don't know exactly what she's doing. Ginger, I... somehow you know exactly what she's doing, and Jin, you know exactly what she's doing, too. She's casting Create Water. And she's uh, drinking from it. Uh, remind me uh, what she looked like. What, is, what does uh, Emily she, look like? Emily um, is uh... um, young-ish in age, somewhere between 8 or 9 years old. Um... She's a little bit shorter than you, <laughs> but a little bit taller than Jin. <laughs> and um, she's got like uh, back length uh, blonde hair, but it's kind of disheveled. Doesn't It's not really like kept in any way. It's just is. Um, she's tan. She's not pale in any way. She definitely looks like somebody like she she's got some muscle to her i would say her hands are calloused she, or she, her face does look like it's you know been weathered a bit like she's been standing out in storms all her life you know pulling weeds and such like that she she is definitely like she is a young child but she is a child who has had to live off of the land her entire life i I hold out my hand and I guess I like I'm like sure uh kind of hesitantly but also like you know uh just unsure okay of the as she pours from her hand the water into yours you can't help but be slightly amused that what like you expect the water to just run between your fingers and just pull onto the ground like uselessly so you're like you're you're ready in there to like start drinking from it but you're surprised that for some reason the water stays in your hand. Every single drop that she puts into your hand stays in your hand until you drink it up. And it's yeah. cold. It's delicious. It's pure. It's... it's the Best water I've ever tasted. <laughs> one of the best waters that you have ever tasted, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna... Can I ask her... I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna walk over to her and be like, hey, hon, can you pour so many points to his head and kind of leans forward... So he can wash his hair. <laughs> she goes, sure, sure. She like she she's um yeah, more than happy to. Let me look something. Uh, so I know she can create a good amount, because I looked this up before, but I want to get the uh exact amount here. <clears throat> and um as you're standing there kind of washing your hair a little bit with the you know the water that she's provided for you, um she kind of giggles a bit. Yeah, she can create up to ten gallons. <laughs> I can God, take a whole damn shower in that. Yeah, like she can. Well, she can create again, as much good. water as y'all need. And she, um, she, she, she laughs, and you know, all the time as she talks about how, you know, she was always proud that she was a waterborn. Um, she tells you this tale about how she helped save this the their little town. Um, there was an exceptionally bad drought when she was only six, and her ability was the only thing that saved the town. Um, I... her... Go ahead. I, after that, so, uh, that I, I just look at her in amazement. I'm like, huh. Uh, like, a, I, how can I describe my face motion? I just I, I tilt my head over to the side a little bit and just have a smile. I'm like, huh. 
Interesting. <laughs> she just uh, like just impressed. I'm just a little legit, legit impressed. <laughs> yeah, she's just uh, like, beaming proudly, just happy to share her gift. And you also, Hallmack, as somebody like as a dwarf, like you're you you're used to like hardship, especially with you know after your what happened with the guild. Um, you you know how hard it is to survive in in the wilderness you had a hell of a time at it but the one thing you struggled with the most was thirst yeah and now you're beginning to understand how it is that this eight nine year old girl was able to wander through the woods and survive for three days as they say, you can, you can, you can, well, you can do days without food, but you can't survive them without water. Exactly. <laughs> three days. Exactly. Three days without water. Well, I was gonna say it's the rule of threes. Uh, speaking of which, everybody drink water. <laughs> get thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Jen, I'm gonna stand up. And he shakes his head like a dog, spraying water everywhere just to make her laugh, make her giggle. <laughs> to which she does. <laughs> she is. And then he seeming... quickly combs his hair. Very she quickly. is seeming a lot better than what she was like just a f mere four hours ago. Like All she, right. her, she's lively. She's giggling. She's talking. Um, but she, after a while, her tummy growls really, really loudly, and she kind of puts her stomach or puts her hands to her stomach and kind of blushes, ashamedly. <laughs> um, but Fine. that's when Hall Max, Gin, and Gingers. Almost at synchronized, all three of your stomachs growl too, and she just starts <laughs> laughing at you. I, uh, since it's about time to eat, I I grab out one of the rations from my bag. Um, I guess uh, we I think I have to split the rations between gin and ginger. Uh, yeah, I think we all have. Everybody has to eat one. Yeah, you can't yeah. split rations. Oh, you no, you oh, no, we, we, we divided them up. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I thought you meant like you took oh, yeah, a single all... rash and you're like, crack it in no. half and no. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, no. we have six health potions in the bag of holding, correct? Mm -hmm. Five. No, because we had one and then we were given five. Did we have one? You bought, yeah, you bought one from um, Lady Ivy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then we were given five. So I think we should distribute them so that in time of need, we don't oh, have to go digging in the bag of holding to get it. So, but... Oh no, what'd you roll? What did you roll for? Nothing, continue. Oh no. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> That's the worst. Um, okay, I'm just, uh, so one question, uh, Pegu, uh, it says, uh, di when else were we doing the, uh, the equipment stuff and it says 10 days of rations so i'm like does a day of ration mean for it's just a, a use of for the course of the day or is it just a, a piece of food a food item for me it's a single use okay but you okay. the way that like food is in D, &D is like it's supposed like you eat once and it's like sustained all day type thing but for me that doesn't I try to be a little bit more realistic than that, unless you're doing it by a magical means, like with a good berry. Because a good berry specifically states that it gives you enough nourishment for the entire day. But like, oh, eating once, like eating a ration at the beginning of the day and saying that that's going to carry you on for the next 24 hours to me is kind of like, nah. Especially okay. with, like, your beings, your characters are powerful beings they have a lot of energy behind them and they're gonna need their calories <laughs> fair enough i mean i'm a dwarf uh, i'm stocky and strong so <laughs> yeah uh with and the potions a lot of we armor. have a uh with all the potions we all can have one and then keep one in the bag of holding yep that's what i was thinking too oh cat okay. trees i completely uh i that <laughs> i feel that same way <laughs> yeah Catchreed says, I've only known this girl for a few hours, but if anything happens to her, I will kill everything in this forest. <laughs> <laughs> that one meme, I will kill everything in this forest and then myself. <laughs> okay, so as you all are sitting there and, you know, beginning to think of the um, 
the various uh, rations um, to eat and such, you hear some commotion coming from the trail, um, for the road, uh, coming from the south, heading towards y'all's direction. You hear, yo, what's up? Go this way, Mr. Thumbtack, let's go. Yo, slow down, Mikey. I'm old, I can only go so fast. Yo, bodacious, let's go, let's go. You all look down the street and you see comes waltzing up uh, a group of five people, uh, four of which are very similar, um, but one it seems kind of out of place. You see four tortle individuals, um, each uh, wearing a brightly colored headband, um, one of which is blue, one of which is red, one of which is orange, and the last one is purple. Standing in the middle of these four tortle individuals is what appears to be an elderly rat person, walking with a staff and cloaked in what appears to be a bathrobe. Two of the tor uh, turtle tortle individuals, the, uh, the red headband one and the orange headband one, are carrying what appear to be large, flat, hinged boxes that are opened. And there's an aroma, like this steam is coming from the inside of these, these little boxes that they're carrying. And even from where you all are sitting, you can smell it. It's, it smells cheesy. It smells spicy. It smells savory. It smells really good. What is Spy doing? I'm just standing there with my jaw <laughs> wide open. This is, uh, by the way, this is from Bunny or Something's resub from the beginning of the stream. The Chaos Roll <laughs> provided oh, no. us with the Tortle Pizza Party. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 I would like to do a performance. <laughs> what would you like to do? Oh. That? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to monotonely say cowabunga but then i'm going to lift my right fe uh, my my right wing and like make the like you know the like surfer like finger sign with my wing <laughs> hey, can you give me a performance check oh just, god just i am because... so slow i just realized this is ninja Tur this is an ninja turtle yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a 14 a 14, easy enough. So as the three of you, Hallmack, Jin, and Ginger, and Emily too, who is just like grinning from ear to ear, by the way, as you all are just enthralled with this, you hear coming from behind you just this loud and bodacious Gowabunga! <laughs> and you look behind you and you see Demovin like with his right wing up and just his his one finger like his just two fingers or, or, or feathery fingers are spread like a Y and he's just kind of twisting his wrist back and forth just yeah <laughs> and you hear coming from the other trail or coming down from the trail <laughs> coming from the uh, this guy wearing the uh, the orange headband What's up, my fine feathered friend? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a better than how slow I how slow it took me to realize that this was a Ninja Turtle. I, well, how was I so slow? Gosh dang it! <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you spoke Turtle. No way. It's a good trip. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the, uh, the turtles, uh, kind of come and approach you all. Um, the one in blue, uh, seems to have, uh, two very, uh, or it has two swords, uh, uh, strapped to his side that appear to be, like, thin scimitars in a way. And he kind of, like, has his hands, like, crossed over his chest. And his palms are faced towards the, the, um like the sheaths or towards the hilts of these swords, but he just didn't like, he's not doing it in a threatening manner, just more of like a, I'm watching you and I'm kind of distrustful of you. Um, 
the the one wearing the uh, purple headband has a, uh, a quarter staff strapped to his back, and he kind of takes a moment and looks up at you, and he goes, hmm, "Excuse me, though, my my fine feathered friend, are are you perhaps a, a friendly individual, or are perhaps uh, one of our enemies?" Who are and, your enemies? <laughs> and the one in the red uh, headband who has what looks to be like battle forks? I don't know, they seem to be like three pronged weapons of some sort. Maybe miniature tridents? You're not entirely sure, but he kind of uh, pipes up and goes, Of course they're for their enemies! We should just kick their asses right now! They probably just want to steal our pizza! And the one in the orange headband goes, Nah, man, that one up there just spoke to Ortle to me, man. There's no way they're for their uh, enemies. Then he's gonna raise his finger real quick. He's gonna be like, What is pizza? We should share it with them. Look, he doesn't even know what the poor dude doesn't even know what pizza is, man. Come on, Wrath. We should help them. We should let's let's give them some pizza. Come on. I don't know, Mikey. You're too trustful. These these people could jump us. They could hurt poor Master Thumbtack. Ah, oh, man, yeah. Thumbtack told us everything we know. Thumbtack would wipe the floor with these fools. Come on, let's go, good, just go chill with them and have a good time. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> the uh, orange headband guy carry uh, just comes over, just a big old grin across his green face. Uh, and he comes down and he presents to you while he's like this my friends this is pizza and he shows it to you all and on the inside of this thin box you see what looks to be like a circular sort of dish it it's very thin and appears to have been cut in triangles um, you recognize most of the substances like the, the raised circular ring on the outside is definitely some sort of bread um, and what the inside of it appears to be some sort of casserole or something of of yeah. cheeses and, and meats and maybe you also see like little splotches of red kind of peeking through here and there. So maybe some sort of sauce as well. You're not entirely sure. I don't know what the stuff is, right? <laughs> but you know that when you smell it, it's <laughs> definitely making you hungry. Like, would Ginger know what this is? Ginger knows exactly what this is. Oh, fuck yeah. In fact, Ginger, you know who the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are. You're from Earth. I like the com yeah, the comic books. You, yeah, you've read comic <laughs> books. You've read, like, anime-based comic books. So you know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So while this is happening, you're just... Jaw is dropped, you're <laughs> pale in the face, and you're just silent. You're like, how? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> like it's it's at this point They're you're real? you're really starting to wonder if you're just in some sort of like fever dream. Like you're you're, you're pinching yourself. Book. You're pinching yourself because you're like how 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 is this? What is going on? <laughs> Hello, Ali Mara. Oh, yeah. Ginger just says this out loud. I was like, somebody pinched me, and like I'm like, you really want me to do that? <laughs> <laughs> One like, point of do, piercing damage. <laughs> 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 um, but it's like the taser all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but you do look down at this pizza, and your mouth is just watering. Oh, the flies <laughs> went on. <laughs> all right, yeah, and, and Emily is just like, "Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tortle," and she she grabs up a piece too and begins devouring away. And he looks up at you, uh, Vemov, and he's like, Come on down, my fine owl friend. You gotta have you a slice too. Come on. I'm gonna do another performance check because I'm just gonna, like, lean my face in and bite, like, a piece out with, like, my beak and then throw it up in the air and then eat it. <laughs> like a mouse. Okay. Oh, uh, but you're just, like, you're gonna try and make it, like, just look like you're eating it, but... Well, no, I am gonna eat it. Just because I just because I don't need to eat doesn't mean I can't. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead and nice. roll that for would be performance, nice my friend. Uh, real talk for a second. Uh, having not uh, having no need to eat but still experience uh, the goodness of food is uh, something that I would long to have the ability to have. Uh, it's a twenty-one. Yeah. A twenty-one My with Whoa. a flourish and with style. You peck down. You all watch as Demovin like pecks down at the box and like 
very fluidly pecks uh, or grabs a piece of pizza by the crust and flings it up in the air. The pizza literally tumbles head like uh, end over end, just doing cartwheel after cartwheel. And after Demovin flips it up in the air, he even himself does a little spin where he just does a quick little 360 on the spot, and as soon as the pizza comes down, he just opens his mouth up wide, and the pizza just, like, point down perfectly, just slurps right down his throat. <laughs> That's impressive. Why do Mikey I get goes, Whoa! Whoa! On that spin? And it just starts slapping, it's like, God <laughs> damn, that was cool. Even, like, the purple headband and, um blue headband start clapping like that that was impressive that was impressive um the th one that they were calling thumbtack goes what what did he do i didn't see anything what's going on where am i oh, yeah, come on thumbtack it's okay um the one in the red headband starts walking the 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 uh this rat kin folk over to the uh, the group um and he sits him down on a log. He's like, sit, sit down here, Mr. Thumbtack. Sit down here. Get, get you some pizza. And he, he picks him up a, a slice of pizza from the box that he's carrying and hands it to him. Oh, you're always the cold best with you don't me fast. <laughs> well, let's take it. I did not expect this, by the way. <laughs> with, with really huge eyes and just grab a slice and then steps backwards and tries it out. And then once he takes one bite, he devours the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do need to ask the turtles again, though. What are they doing here? Who are their enemies? Oh, no, man. I mean, we got people that are always trying to jump us. You know I mean? Like, we're, we're not, like, you know, crooked people or anything like that it's just we're usually out there trying to help people and save people so you know there's a lot of people that don't really like that you know what i mean the one in the blue headband uh, kind of speaks up looking at you and he goes basically what he's trying to say is we're roaming bodyguards for hire um we're helping this individual get to his town right now and uh, he's very wealthy um rat folk and um a lot of people try and target him, and uh, we're just we're here to help protect him. Uh, the, the difference in the voices. <laughs> the other one's super dramatic, and this other dude just like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's interesting. Well, we're yeah. off. We have our own business to tend to as well, uh, Mister. I haven't captured name. Oh, I'm Leo, says the blue headband guy. Uh, he points he points a thumb at the orange headband. That's Mikey over there. Um, Raph in the red over there. And uh, Donnie over there in purple. And no, I was too fucking lazy to change their names, okay? <laughs> no, I <is> awesome. <laughs> uh, I'll accept it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're on a similar mission ourselves, so we totally, we totally get you. And he does the whole... Two fingers and the eyes thing. He, as uh, as you say like, this, as eyes. you say this to Leo, he kind of glances over at the little girl and kind of gives a nod and understanding. And he kind of looks over at you and kind of gives you a two finger salute of respect. Is back. Nice. Uh, but you all take a moment and feast heartily to your heart's content. There's plenty of pizza to go around. Um, it seems like that uh, they. Um, are connoisseurs, or there that is something that they themselves create and had created um, in the uh, local kitchen down at the crossroads, um, which they say is the tavern at Smithson. Um, they How said the uh, the bear dude there, uh, Mikey calls him the bear a dude. The bear dude there was really fucking outrageous, man. He he really let me uh, have free reign over his kitchen, and only for like one gold piece too, man. It's like a steal. I've had people charge me up to ten fucking gold pieces to let me rent out their kitchen. Can you believe it? It's like I'm providing my own ingredients, bruh. Why you gotta try and stiff a turtle, you know? It's not yeah. even fair. But to have pizza magic, can I re-roll my stats? I want pizza magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a family recipe. Hey, tell you what, if we run into you again, I'll teach you how to make it, all right? But <laughs> we'll leave that up to the fates. Yeah. 
Audacious. Audacious. Yeah, I didn't know you spoke Turtle Tooth. <laughs> Yo, these guys are all right. If I can't believe you thought they wanted to hurt Mr. Thumbtacks. <laughs> the rap just kind of thumps. <laughs> Alright, so, um, you all, um, are fed for the morning, and we're gonna say that because of the pizza magic, you are, um, sustained enough through lunch, so you will not need to eat again until dinner time. But after a while, the turtles do say that they need to get Mr. Thumbtack back to his town. They bid you all adieu, and they get on their way. <laughs> I just, I decided to as myself. As soon as well, they're gone, I'm gonna look to everybody and be like, I have no idea what I was doing. So what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck did I just do? <laughs> well, that was interesting. All right, I clap my hands together. All right, so we we need to figure out what we're doing now. So what? We are going to the tower to kill the bandits. All right then. So I guess the question I have is. We have a crate in our in our cart. We 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 have about two to four days, uh, two and maybe one to four days uh, walk from here to the town that was over on the horizon that you saw them of, and and we have a crate in our in our in our trunk that we need to, and that we need to protect. So the question is, what do we do with the box? How much does the box weigh? Uh, good question. <laughs> I look over, I go over to the car and, uh, take a, pick it up, and I, and I guess I roll a perception check out for this thing. See how this is a strength check, maybe? The, like, lift it up? The crates themselves are, um, strapped to the, uh, ah. cart. Strapped to it. Interesting. Yeah, so it's more than one. Okay. The horses are fine, right? Yeah, the horses are fine. The, the, they, 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 um, they, you all kind of, like, hitch them to some nearby trees and, um, like, let them kind of graze throughout the night. And there is, like, a small kind of a creek that's been running, um, perpendicular to this trail road for a while now. Um, but as you all kind of start, like, packing up and getting everything together, the thunder cloud is getting much closer. Um, the wind begins to pick up as you all start approaching into mid-morning. Um, the bad weather hasn't necessarily hit yet, but it is definitely getting closer. Which direction is that town again? Uh... Well, what? you can only head down southward. Like, you, you've all been heading south. Okay. It, it's just one road. Yeah. Well, I just know one book. I'm just trying to figure out which town is the bandit town, which town is Smithton, which is where we need to go. Uh, we need to go to Bandit Town. Well, do yeah. we take care of her parents first, or do we deliver first? I thought they were in the same place. I thought the Bandit Town was where the parents were. No, it's we small... need to deliver the the herbs to Smithson, but her parents oh. are in the Bandit Town. So which one do we do first? I mean, do we really I mean... take this cart of goods to the Bandits? I mean... A quick reminder um, to the team that the mission was to take care of the bandits as That's well cool. as complete the delivery. Yeah, we gotta do both. So, like, the bandits are gonna try to ambush us anyways. We know where they're at. Why not get the drop on them? They're gonna be with us at the goods regardless. True. Why let them get the jump when we have the information to do the same? Huh. I'm open for ideas. I think I just have one. I, okay? I, I I look up I look up at Did everybody with, 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 a smirk, with a smirk on my face. What if we pose as using this cart as bait to get into the bent town, saying this is this is this cart is full of stuff for 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 Reinar. and then we ambush them. Why don't we just go in and ambush them? Yeah, we could just like leave the horses somewhere close by and leave the cart out of their, out of their radius and just go jump them. If we have nothing, won't steal the cart though. 
I think Helmet is thinking of like a uh, like a Trojan horse type thing. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but then we risk damaging Young the. Good so six just the goods. followed. Oh. Young Adex, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Why in. are we getting sprinkled with pigus? Somebody just followed. Oh. Mm. <laughs> um, well, I'm going with either Demo with uh, Demovin's idea, where we basically just park up somewhere, out, most likely out of uh, range and out of sight, and then we uh, slowly get into the town, uh, find and start uh, start doing some damage, I guess. We don't even know oh. who our civilians are and how many how many bandits are. Hmm. As you all are I sitting can fly, there discussing... so when we get close, I can like get a bird's eye view, maybe. Ha, 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 ha. With, but... the, with the incoming storm, I don't know if that's a good idea. I am already dead. Whatever this storm brings can't do much more than that. Yeah, but <laughs> we are not. <laughs> Yet. Yet. That's all you all are sitting there discussing um, what to do. You do hear like a small little cough coming from the uh, cart as Emily just kind of sitting there humming to maybe, herself. Maybe we should ask the girl how she would feel about us delivering a cart without her parents. Well, I guess I feel like we, we of... know how she's going to feel. <laughs> so I guess since we have uh, Emily, come here. What do you think we huh? should do about this? Do about what? Like, what? We have... We are uh, people sent to deliver this cart, and this cart of goods to the nearby town. And we have, but we also want to help find your parents and 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 take care of the evil men that have hurt them. My parents are Especially on the road. I remember Reinar saying that he made them work the road because the they because the they were must. He, they, 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 they looked, uh, I forget what he said, they, they looked more impopitating, impopitating, impopitating than the others. <laughs> so maybe if we keep going, they'll just, they'll jump us. So, I don't know. Um, oh, this is tough. I kind of like Demovin's idea to park the cart and then sneak in, you know. Then maybe we can go around, like, where... See, like, they're I in the can... woods around the tr around the road. If we go a little further out, and we can flank them. Do you know what I mean? I am also open to walking up alone myself so you can get a ambush on the others that I am talking to. I am quite good at talking to people. Take your word on that. See? I just did good talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're saying Let's use go. you as bait on the cart. I don't need the cart. Just one person by themselves wouldn't be very threatening. True. I am just a bird. But aren't they going to wonder why you're walking instead of flying? I am here to discuss with Lord Reinhardt things. Why would I... Ah, uh, what's the word? Eh, insult him by just flying above his airspace. How about this? Urgent and confidential. If they don't know what that means, it, 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 they, can, they can piss off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good that. Well, from, what she's say, what, from what she's saying, and I point over to Emily. It does not it need to take... It seems like them. they're on the road. They're waiting for people on the road. So they're going to be on either side of the road, kind of close to the road, within ambush range. What if we just use, send you down the road as bait, but the, us other three will take one side and the other and go a little further out. Kind of like double parentheses. I like and take, it. And that way we can, we're within ambushing range of them while they're in ambushing range of you. That's fair. Alright, I think we have a plan now. Or you can use me as bait, and I can cast uh, Cause Fear, which would make them run into you, literally. 
They will not be able to attack me if I do not want them to. I promise you that. Okay. Let's just continue on and see what happens. We'll probably just improvise from there. Let's just start start mo start making our moves, and we gotta get start, start moving before the storm hits us. Let us go then. All right. Okay. Ginger, which one do you want to go with, him or me? Mm. Either one, really. Roll the dice. I take Ethan. <laughs> okay, going with you. It was, okay. it was a four. Okay, so how are y'all dividing up? So well, Ginger gonna... and I... Go ahead. I was just thinking, I was gonna get in the cart with uh, with Emily and keep her close by to me. I don't want anything happening to her until we find the her The whole point is for us to flank them. Mm -hmm. So you I have to be either on the left side of the road or the right side of the road in the forest. I'm gonna be on the cart. Okay. okay. I am the <clears throat> solo merchant wandering the dangerous roads. Okay. Started with that. <laughs> so and, and so Ginger and Jen are going to be in the woods, kind of following along. We're gonna be not quite close to the road, but like where we think they would hide, we're gonna be a little few feet from that. Okay. A few feet deeper within the forest. But you'll still right be side. you'll still be in the woods. Yes. Okay. I guess uh, for safety, just in case, uh, just to keep it, I'll keep Emily with me. Um, Emily, can you, how, are you able to walk now? She looks up and she goes, uh huh. Okay. Um, and she gets up on her feet and, I'm a tough girl! She starts running around. Then she slips on a rock and falls and goes, ah! <laughs> Alright. You're gonna, you, you, you stay by my side and t if I tell you to stay, you stay, okay? Okay. Um, let's, let's move. All Here's right. To take care of. So you all uh, get your battle plan, um, get into your positions, and um, start making your way uh, southern down the road, uh, slowly leaving the campsite behind where you just had such a humorous um, interaction with a group of tortle strangers and a rat. <laughs> Um, it, it was a wonderful time and, and a wonderful camp and first camp together as a group and will probably be fond in your memories for a very, very long time. Yeah, Jen's um, going to have dreams of pizza until he gets it again. <laughs> as you all um, and, 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 and dreaming of that pizza and all the fun times that you all just had. Well, you have plenty of time to do that because trailing through the sides of the woods is actually proven to be quite difficult. Um, so much so that you're literally trudging through something called difficult terrain, meaning that in order to move through this terrain, you're having to move at half speed. So instead of being 30 feet per sec or 30 feet per six seconds, you're 15 feet per Thursday. Well, you're in the cart, and the cart is having to match pace. So these horses that are normally moving at I think it's 40 or 60 feet or meters in six seconds they're having to slow it down too because the yeah the, the, the forest trail is it, it's not like so thick that it's impossible to get through but like there's a lot of brushes there's a lot of bushes there's a lot of roots that's hiding underneath leaves and such just a lot of things that just keep kind of tripping you up and slowing you down a little bit just making trailing along a little bit just not as fruitful as you would have liked it to be. Um, that being said, you do uh, continue on uh, making it down the southern road, but after a while, the storm overhead does begin to overtake you. Um, at first, you think that there's bits of hail that's coming down, because you start hearing all around you here. You hear these clinks and tinks noise, tink noises of what sound like hailstones as they, you know, um, rain down and hit various things like branches, nearby rocks, and such like that. Um, I pick up the hail. I pick up the. Uh, it's uh, not until an actual piece of this quote-unquote hailstone or hail begins to actually lay, uh, land near, we'll say, Hallmack, as he takes an interest in it. Um, Hallmack, as you look down and pick it up, at first you think it's maybe a discolored piece of hail, 
but you look down and this quote unquote hailstone is a deep, rich blue. Mm. And um, as you pick it up, I just want to see how big it was. <laughs> um, it's about the size of I would say like a D twelve, like one of your D twelves. There, oh. it's about that big. It, it's a sizable little. It's stone. raining inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but as these large stone-like things begin falling from the sky, I'm gonna say each of you have a 65% chance of getting hit. Oh, God oh including They're... Emily, because she's out there too, with no cover. Is this I, something that Jen I... would know what it is? Can I raise oh, my Jesus. shield above my head? Can I raise my shield oh above my, my head? <laughs> Can I raise my shield above my head to cover my cover myself and uh and Emily who's walking right beside me? Well, actually yeah, Wow. But... Wow, no way. Oh no. No, it's actually a good thing. You all manage to avoid getting hit by any of these gemstones as they begin falling from the sky. However, as these stones come falling down, a lot of them, as they make contact with the ground or various other surfaces, actually explode in a small, fine dust. But a lot of them, including the one that Hallmack um, recovered, actually stick around. As you all kind of look around, you start noticing that gemstones are falling from the sky. A lot of them are smashing and disappearing into gem dust, but some of them are landing, like, things that when they land in, like, soft style things they're not breaking so what do you do is this something Jin would know about uh make a nature check it does not matter if he dies it does not matter if he gets harmed every gemstone that he sees that is not disappearing the bird is grabbing <laughs> okay this is like a um, piece for you off he is, off of the, he is off of the cart. He is darting through the fucking <laughs> air, uh, just grabbing Definitely. everything he can. Give Shiny me. I rolled a twelve. Give me a dexterity check, Demovin. And Jen, you rolled a twelve. You know that uh, being a denizen of Fear, you know that Fear has some really chaotic weather patterns. Sometimes the weather will be nice, sometimes it'll be okay, and sometimes it will literally be raining animals. You have no idea what might come falling from the sky. Like, some people have heard tale of gemstone rain. It is a very rare occurrence, but here it is. This is what the dice gave you all, by the way. This is the <laughs> first weather roll. I'm like, no fucking way they got gemstone rain. No so, fucking way. <laughs> Jim's gonna hold out part way. of his cloak to try to catch some. Um, go ahead and make a dexterity check, Jin. And Demovin, what did you roll? That's a 20. A 20? Yeah. Wow. Okay, Damn. um, <clears throat> yeah. You pull out, um, 11 gold pieces worth of gemstones. Um, what do I do in this situation as, uh, as the events are pulling are unfolding around me? Um, I, I just take up a, I just start picking up a few off the ground, uh, just to put, put in my pocket, I guess. Okay. Or, um, go the, ahead, uh, Hallmack, give me a perception check. Jin, what did you get? Um, I rolled a 13. Uh, 13. Okay. Um, you don't, you don't, like, since you're holding out your cloak and you're kind of keeping it more localized, you don't get as many. But you do actually. Never mind. I take that the fuck back. Dice said no. Actually, they got <laughs> that was a quite... nice soft so, landing. So okay, Demovin, you had two D twelve. Okay, you had two D twelve gemstone collected. Jin, you only had two D six, and yet somehow you also got eleven gold pieces worth of gemstone. <laughs> <laughs> I need more. <laughs> I rolled. How long is this seven. here? Fifteen. Okay. How much did I get? Uh, eleven. Um, since you're only picking them up, we'll say this much. Uh, and Hallmack, you find six uh, ge uh, gold pieces worth of gemstones. Okay. I guess, do I just add that to my uh, GP? Yeah, you can also put it like, uh, yeah, you can like, well, annotate it in your inventory that it's like so many worth of gemstones, but if you want to transfer that into g uh, gold, or if you wanted to use them like as gold, like, let's say you come across a potion, yeah, and it's, like, five gold pieces. 
you could give the the six gold gem stone or six gold pieces worth of gemstones over, and they would give you a gold piece back. So how many gemstones did I pick up? Um, pick how many exactly? Um, I'd say only like three. Three, and then uh, value is six. Okay. Thank you. Because yeah, mm -hmm. I wrote mine down as gold or gemstones, eleven GP. And uh, Ginger. He's kind of just like kicking the ones that are like laying on the ground but don't break. Just kind of like kicking around a little bit. Just <laughs> seeing if you can break them. Give me a strength check. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, oh, no. Never mind. They're cat They've eleven. turned gemstones as cat Oh, toys. one? No, eleven. Oh, eleven. Okay. Actually, so as you go to, like, you see a gemstone that's laying by by you and like, add, like a little bit of humor, you kind of turn around and give it like you know quick little snappy mule kick kind of thing like a little rabbit kick and as your back foot makes contact with the gemstone it shatters into um, a fine dust that seems to embed itself into the claws of your back foot yeah so as you now look down your claw has this um We'll say sapphire dust literally embedded inside of it. Does it hurt? No. You've got hmm. painted nails. You feel you feel like <laughs> but you feel like nails. your foot is slightly more weighty. Like your claws feel more sturdy in that foot, if that makes sense, but oh, other than that. <laughs> He's gonna do like that dog post poo kick to try to get, <laughs> try to get his claws clean. <laughs> oh my god, my dog buddy does that all the time, but he like literally like kicks the ground, like he drags his back feet on the ground and like literally kicks up piles of dirt that go flying everywhere. So, Ginger, while you're doing that, Hallmack, you're sitting there and all of a sudden you start getting pelted with bits of dirt. <laughs> You look over at Ginger's with me, not Hallmark. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Ginger's with me, not Hallmark. Hallmark's on the other side of the road. Well, it goes flying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm kicking. <laughs> All the way across I'm the road. Like what Minji does. <laughs> All the way across I'm, the road, I'm directly into me. I'm like, I'm like, I, I just, I just look at him from the distance. I'm like, hey, watch it. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. What? Sorry. All right, so yeah, no, he, he, he's not sorry. <laughs> um, as you all take a moment and gather yourselves, Hallmack, you kind of uh, get back into the car, and uh, Demovin, you come down um, and take a seat. Uh, Demovin, um, you feel a little tug on your cloak, like kind of coming from your back, and you look, you pan your head like back the the one hundred and eighty degree thing that owls can do and kind of look down and Emily is uh, down uh, in the back of the cart and she's holding up what appears to be a diamond in the palm of her hands and she's holding it up to you and she said I saw you wanted the pretty stone so I got you one nah, he's gonna Aww. like stare at it um this uh diamond is actually worth 60 gold pieces yeah yeah nah, he's going to light it <laughs> he's, he's actually going to, to the the two one what he do, man. He's the bird. Rayo, okay. Yo, cat treats. Thank you for the tier one sub to Oreo Cakes. Oreo, enjoy the emotes and every viewing. Oh. Um, cat treats. That is a a roll oh, no. on the uh, chaos table, there, my friend. Oh, oh no. Let's see a week. Oh, no. yeah. Let's see what the dice are gonna give this time. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Pizza party part that? two. Oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I don't like that. So okay, before that, uh, he's gonna take the <laughs> diamond and put it away and pat the girl up Hold on. <laughs> As you bite the diamond. Oh no. Oh boy. The ground around like underneath you just suddenly freezes over and a sheet of ice just spreads for a mile radius around you. Jin 
and Ginger and the horses all need to make dexterity saving throws or oh, become about... trapped in the ice. I oh. I immediately started oh. thinking about the horses. I'm like, oh no, poor, poor, poor the horses. I got a 12. No. Oh. You all said right. dexterity, right? Yes. I got a four. Oh. <laughs> Wait, are they trapped or are they just literally They all the failed! Every one of you failed! Even the horses oh, failed! Oh, not the horses! <laughs> well, well... The rest of the horses, um... Oh, no! You both all suffer four points of cold damage, and the horses succumb to the icy freezing temperature and literally just pass out and die what no. as they stand there if, yeah the horses don't have much hp no they don't i wouldn't even think they, they have would. like 2 hp <laughs> and they just took 4 <laughs> points of cold damage they just froze to death that's overkill. Thanks, cat to... treats! I... <laughs> I, I, I just had a thought. <laughs> Can we... Hold on, let me actually... Let me let me verify that, actually. The... I would just imagine they straight up just turned into ice to statues because of that. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, hold on. Actually, no. I am very much wrong. I am very, very much wrong, actually. Hold on. They have that much HP. I did not know. Hold on. They might be okay. They are okay. They are not dead. They have yes. nine HP. No. Nine. They have eleven. <laughs> they have eleven HP total. But they just both took four points of cold damage. They are not dead. They are not horsicles. I'm glad I I checked that. Just most critters in D&D &D don't have that much HP, but I'm like, wait, horses are actually pretty hardy, and they have a pretty fine constitution, so they might actually have more, yeah. so I looked it up. No, they, they, they have they have 2d10 plus 2 worth of HP, so they are both okay. Catreats, you, you didn't kill the horses, but they are trapped in the ice. Jin and Ginger, you both are trapped in ice as well, as the ground suddenly and unexpectedly freezes over. Um, like, uh, two uh, inches, two inches worth of ice are now covering your ankles. Ginger, both your hands and feet, because you're, you're quadrupedal, you're, all four of your legs are stuck. Uh, Jin, only your legs are stuck. But the same as for the horses, all four of their legs are stuck and frozen over in ice, and they're suddenly panicking and, like, trying to pull their, their, uh, the, the hooves out, but they're not doing really well. <laughs> Can I <laughs> use burning hands to free us? No! Oh my god. Unfortunately, Ginger, you you cannot because there are somatic components to that spell, and you are not able to put your hands together to create the uh, somatic seal. That is actually very um, thematic for burning hands. Um, I Quick thinking of mine, I noticed that the horses and Ginger are and Jin are stuck in ice. I jump out of the car, uh, open my backpack, and grab a chisel for my uh, smith tools. Okay. And start um, uh, trying to hack away the ice uh, from... I guess I'll start with Ginger first. Hall Mac? Oh, um... Hall Mac, hold on. Yeah. Um, as soon as you jump out of the cart and onto oh. the ice, I need oh, you to make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. You're gonna be TPK'd by an, uh, I just, an icy ice floor. Just random ice floor. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I didn't think. Forest. I didn't think that far. I didn't think that far. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh crap. Um. You slip on the a... ice and fall on your head. Oh, um, Save while the all this is happening, uh, Demovin's just gonna look to Emily and be like, "Can you get rid of the water?" Uh, guys. Unfortunately, she already cast Create Water, and she can only do it once per day. And she looks um, up at you and goes, I can't, I'm sorry. Guys, um, it's, um, I, my, I thought it on my keyboard, but, um, it's a natty one. <laughs> Alright, well, and not only do you slip and fall on your ass, but on the way down, you actually crack the side of your head, 
which you still have the helmet off, by the way, because you did not say you donned it back on yet. Um, you crack I... your head on the side of the cart and receive two points of bludgeoning damage. Fuck you! The forest. No, I thought I... he was in the cart. Oh, he took Although it off. Was... Um, when he ate no, the pizza? No, 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 no. Not that. The... I thought he was on the other side of the road. No, he's with the cart. the cart. Yeah, he's on, he's on, he's on, Hallmack's on the cart. Oh, man. <laughs> like, he collected up all the gems and then got back into the cart. Everybody started getting back into the cart and started to go on their way when Emily tugged on Demovin's vest and said, I got this diamond for you. He pecked it, which caused... Not, not not actually caused, but that's when the chaos element happened and ice froze over the ground for two whole or for an entire mile radius. Well then, um, I I'm like ow. This is why you wear a helmet. <laughs> uh, I, I get this my mouth concussion. concussion. You're fine. At least you can make an ice pack. <laughs> 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 Uh, that was a good one. Thank you. I look at I look at I look at Jin like I, I look at Jin like okay, thanks for that. <laughs> Anytime, bro. Yeah. Also, looking uh, at Creator Destroy Water, it doesn't let you destroy ice, unfortunately. But it was a good idea, Demovin. But I wanted to look up that up. I was curious. <laughs> All right. I I, I I scramble to my feet. Actually, grab my hel I reach into the car, grab my helmet, and, and secure it to my uh, secure it to my head. Like not having that happen again. And, <laughs> Hang on. And start using my chisel to free gin and ginger. And okay. okay. Well, um, I reach into my pack and grab. I have a crowbar. And I start chipping at the ice around my feet. Okay. Um. So, Hallmac. Yeah. Um. So you get back up from slipping on the ice and you grab up your chisel and now you're gonna start walking towards gin and ginger correct yeah how far away i need another ginger? dexterity saving throw okay <laughs> this is uh, ice <laughs> uh, I question rolled a yes never been oh, there you go i'm sorry go Thanks. ahead Devin. So if I were to get to like a safe enough range that like I don't actually hurt anybody, could I like thunderclap the ground to cause cracks in the ice to make this easier? Hmm. I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it is a um, it is thunder damage, right? Yeah, it's sound. Okay. Yeah, I, I can allow that. I think Thunder also does like more damage to uh, like to like solid objects too. Or no, that's the spell Shatter. Never Is that's the um, that's, that's the the, the Cantrip yeah. one. That's the Cantrip level, right, Demovin? Yeah, that's the Cantrip level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm long as I'm that. not like within five feet of them, I, I I won't like cause damage. I'm just thinking if I like clap at the ice, maybe cracks. Okay. So. Uh, I'm gonna assume you're gonna do this with the horses since Hallmack is like now he's kind of like he learned his lesson from slipping on his ass before, and you kind of look over and kind of giggle a bit as you see Hallmack kind of doing this whole shuffle slide thing while using the the the, the pickaxe chisel to kind of like kind of clink forward and pull himself forward a bit, and he shuffles his feet a little bit, and then clinks and pulls himself forward, just slowly making his way over to them while systematically making sure he doesn't fall. Um, but you kind of fly over and uh, kind of hover a bit, like five feet away from the horse, and you cast the, uh, I'm sorry, it was a uh, thunderclap, right? Yep. Okay. Um, go ahead, and I'm actually going to say roll a percentile dice for me here. That's, We're going to uh... say you have a 50% chance. That's the, uh, the two D10s, the one with the single digits and one with the double digits. Um, you're looking to roll a 50 or below. Uh, that's a 17. 17, you got it. So, um, as you thunderclap the ground, a, um, a web of cracks shoots out from you towards the direction of the horses and fans out just enough in a, um, enough of a pattern where the ice kind of cracks and breaks apart around the, uh, the horse's hooves and they're able to kind of, like, free themselves from it. Um, some of their hooves are not, like, completely clean, like, uh, like, um, a couple of chunks of ice are still clinging to them, but you're able to kind of go over there and knock them off easily enough. Um, Hallmack and Chin, 
go ahead and give me, I'll say since Jin started to working on his own feet, Hallmack, you're going to go over to Ginger and try to help him out, right? Or are you going to yeah. go and help out Jin? I had Ginger. If Ginger's okay. working on himself, I'll work on, I'll you work on both, Ginger. You both, both give me strength checks, please. Ah, oh. uh, yes, my biggest, my biggest strength. All right. <laughs> uh, not you, Ginger. You're 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 literally stuck. You can't do anything to help right now except maybe spit at oh. the ice and hope that the hotness of your spit will dissolve it. <laughs> <laughs> there is one way you could get out, but I don't think you're ready for that. I'm eleven uh -oh. right here. Uh, a little bit lower. Oh, I, I think I know what you're referring to. No. Yeah. Um, what'd you get, Homac? I rolled an eleven combined. 11 total. Um, so as you swing down the chisel to uh, hit at the ice, it doesn't really like do as much damage as you were really hoping it would. It takes a good while. Uh, Jin, what did you get? 13. 13. You are actually able to free both of your legs before Hallmack is able to free a single leg of Ginger's. Um, okay, can I go over and help with his other... Like, if he's working on the front legs, I'll work on the back legs. Sure, do you walk over there? Yes. Give well, me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I crawl over there? Give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh. Any type of movement speed that is ground-based on ice is subjected to dexterity saving throws so you fall prone. Can I fly over well, there? Yes, you're. that's why you haven't had to make had to make a single check yet, Demo, because you have a flying speed. <laughs> I rolled a 12. A 12. You fall in your ass. No. <laughs> um, so just, you go to take a step and her. your feet <laughs> just both like come out from underneath you. Oh, we can we take away this ambience, the uh, storm pass. I'm sorry. That was getting to be loud too. But um, yeah, the, 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 the gemstone storm passed and now y'all are dealing with this ice. But um... Yeah, so you go to take a couple of steps towards Ginger, and your feet just whoop, come right underneath you, and you just <laughs> fall right onto the ground. Um, it doesn't no, hurt because you don't hit anything. Yeah, and it's a pretty short fall anyway, so you're all right. Um, uh, Demon, Ginger's what were you wanting to do? Snickering. Oh, what? No, I just came over here to laugh at them while they're all slipping around. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Gin, Ginger's as you're in, yeah. laying there, um, a little bit. What the heck? Why did that change? did you change okay weird one of my ambiences just decided to change to something completely different randomly and i didn't even hit anything <laughs> um anyway i mean i probably could free the cat like i did the the, the horses if he asked nicely no but i was gonna say I mean, Jin, while, you're, while you're laying there on the ice you hear um the fluttering of some wings and you look over and you see Demovin just kind of pointing at you laughing <laughs> I wouldn't be pointing, okay? Oh, yeah, not, not, well, he's not pointing, but... I would be rolling around, would be rolling around in the laugh. air laughing. <laughs> okay, there you go. You just see his bird just comically rolling around in the air as if he's levitating, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but G Ginger would, would point and laugh. <laughs> well, snicker more like, but... Hey, you can't laugh. You're still stuck. Um, all right, so... Hallmack, um... So after a while, the the uh, the eleven it, it takes you a while. Um, Jin eventually kind of scurries over and helps you out as well, um, but it, it does take quite some time for you to uh, to free Ginger from the ice. I mutter to myself th saying, I "I'm usually better at this." <laughs> and uh, as you uh, Ginger, as you kind of step out onto the ice a little shakily because it's very slippery. It suddenly begins to turn to water as the icy landscape reaches its time limit and okay. melts away. So we could have just waited. I'm just going to laugh even harder. <laughs> I wasn't going to say any fucking thing, but God damn it. <laughs> That's not exactly like I wanted it to. <laughs> this, today's campaign is just the comedy campaign. Oh. It really is. Oh, this is just this whole entire campaign is gonna be like this. This is this is good. This is oh, my God. chaos table. There is literally a hundred fucking things like this. Okay, we've only seen two. There's ninety-eight oh, no. more possibilities here. 
Bye. All made up, and Pigas. Little Nigel. <laughs> they were. Well, not all of them. There was like 36 of them that came from the list that I was using um, on the first one. On the first episode. But there was a lot of them on there that I didn't like. And I took out. And like, also a lot of them were like multiple numbers like if you rolled a 37 to 42 this specific thing would happen i'm like nah every single one is a one specific number so we have 100 different things that could happen here. hey go real quick uh no. can you uh the whole entire grand map is on the screen i'm wondering if there's any other more simplified map of what's going on around us so we can see but i don't know if you have one already. um i haven't finished it yet <laughs> yeah we haven't gotten the uh the territory map done just yet you can um, use the Etsy map. But like, we uh, do have... Use one of the Etsy maps. Hold on, let me... Oh, yeah. I'm just, like, wondering Terrible. if I get it uh, I'm just kind of trying to get a better picture of the scene here. Of what we're looking at. There we at. go. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay. I should I should have done that before. <laughs> My apologies. Um, Which can be but... found at the link provided below. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Alright, now that that's done, I'm gonna go check on the horses, make sure they're okay, and then keep going. The horses have, um, frostbite damage around the their hooves, um, especially, oh, like, the areas where, like, their legs meet in with their hooves. Um, there is a lot of damaged skin that's, like, frozen over and just looks really, like, cracked and, and damaged and dry, um little it's bleeding a little bit but the horses don't seem overly bothered by it like obviously they like they're they're hurting a bit like you actually notice that the horses a couple times bend down and kind of lick at their wounds trying to clean it you know a little bit or trying to help it to feel a little better um can i roll a medicine check to like try to like clean and help the wound a little bit not like necessarily heal it but like make it more comfortable for them sure go ahead and give me a roll That's a 21. 21. Nice. Uh, easy enough. Um, you actually... I'll say, like, find a bit of scrap cloth somewhere. Uh, we'll just say, like, I a part of the... Alright, like, like you find a bit of, like, random cloth that you have on you and um, kind of make some makeshift bandages to, um, like, you take a little bit of, um, like, water from the nearby creek. Uh, wash the wounds a little bit we can and slap tape. Some flex tape on that. Up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I saw. I, 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 I had to interrupt you for that one. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, you, you take a moment. Um, you even like dip the bandages in the nice cold brook water and and place it on um, the wounds. And at first, the the horses are kind of like whinny and 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 like you know pull back a little bit from it like instinctively but um after a while they definitely do kind of calm down and seem very appreciative and a little bit more comfortable with um walking around and such i sure i'm glad i'm getting all these good rolls now so that way i can get a one in combat and die yeah <laughs> you're already dead <laughs> You're not afraid to happen. die. You're fine. I mean, I, I mean, the bird isn't. I am. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I may play this bird like he's not afraid to die, but I don't want to lose this character. I fucking love this bird, man. You would. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh. So. You all take a few moments to kind of collect yourselves and just kind of think about the events of today. Um, is there anything that you want to change about your, yeah, moving, your marching orders, or are you going to continue on down the road like you've been, where you got to and off in the woods and the trail? Because it is very slow. You you guys are going at about 15 meters per six seconds, and that's like a quarter of the traveling time the that you could be. You guys don't have to be in the woods, you could just follow behind the cart. I just figured if we flanked them, it would be... When we get there, that's when you can start flanking them while I'm talking well, to them. Well, I figured... Well, as long as they don't see us. But I figured they would I... be on the road, ready to ambush us. But we're moving. I mean, even... Slow. 
even then, yeah, no, we we should we should we should get back to the road where we can move faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a while, we get on moving. I agree. So, uh, riding horses like normal movement speed is 60 feet, or it is 60 feet per second, or not second, god damn it. It's 60 feet per six seconds every round. Um, yeah, damn. So, even with you all just walking along with the cart, you're still going to be slowing it down. That's why when you all are in the woods and having to deal with the difficult terrain, which means you can only move at half speed, um, like, even with you all walking along in the road, just normally walking, the cart will still be slower down than normal. I'm just letting you all know that the traveling pace. So, you can walk in the woods if you want to, but you'll be really, really slow, and the cart will be moving very slowly. You can walk along the side of the cart, and then the horses will be kind of just walking along with y'all. Or you can ride in the cart and have the horses going, you know, full tack, and actually get the benefit of, like, the 60 feet per round movement speed. Are the horses healthy enough to move that fast? They, their wounds have been treated, yes. Okay. They are injured, but not hindered. And since we're all technically small creatures, we wouldn't add that much weight to the mm -hmm. to the cart, so... Hmm. And plus, there's two horses. If it was only one horse, they might struggle with, like, the weight of the cart, plus, you know, even just the people, because y'all may be small, but dwarfs are dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. Dwarfs stocky. are stocky. <laughs> like, Hallmack is definitely the biggest and heaviest out of the group. Like, yeah, we're... I, I can actually tell you my actual weight right now. I weigh 150 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not including my gear, most likely. <laughs> Alright, yeah. everybody on the cart, then. Well, Jin is gonna find the horse that seems, like, the least injured, crawl up on its back, and then wrap his arms around his neck and just kind of lay there. Hugging the, <laughs> hugging the horse... Okay. Give me an animal handling check. He's not doing it. He's just laying on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with no saddle. You, you ever rode a ho horse harness. bareback before? A they horse that also to, just They have a injured. harness to strap them to 16. the cart. It's not a riding harness. No. Um, as but... you approach the horse, it is... Like, even, like, you notice that the horse is still had, like, treats you with the same demeanor as it also did with Demovin. Like, with it being injured, anything that comes near it, it's gonna feel a little, you know, overly protective and cautious because it, it's hurting, it feels pain in, like, all four of its legs. While the wounds have been treated and the pain is lessened, it's still there. Um, but as you approach it, it does kind of, like, you know, move to, like kind of like move away from you and its eyes get on like with one side eye just looks at you like really really wide and frightened but you put your hands up and go shh, 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 shh. it's okay it's okay and the horse kind of just kind of you know just kind of does eventually calm down and you know slowly relaxes um and you know eases back into its natural spot in the cart and you're able to then you know with you know using the tack of the cart and such like that you're able to get up and kind of hug it and comfort it and shush it in its ear and after a while the horse just kind of begins making happy horsey noises <laughs> thank you <laughs> alright everybody get on the cart come on let's go road trip <laughs> road trip All right, when so... we get closer to the town I'll fly up and make sure we're not about to get ambushed okay um yeah, after a while, um, you all start making your way down the road. Um, within about, like, 30, 40 minutes or so, um, some time passes, and not really too much happens. Um, but after a while, you do start noticing that, like, the woods begin to kind of thin out a bit on, like, the um, eastern side of the, uh, the road here, which would be on y'all's left-hand side. Um, the trees do begin to thin out a bit, and uh, Demovin, as you kind of glance over and look in that general direction, um, you do notice, like, what appears to be, like, small rooftops and such like that, and you do notice, like, a single pillar of, um, like, what appears to maybe be campfire or cooking fire uh, smoke just steadily rising from one of those rooftops. I'm gonna relay the fact that we have life nearby. Okay, as you say that, careful. as you say that, Emily kind of 
gets up and um, rushes to the front of the cart and looks over uh, Hall Mac's shoulder towards the direction that you're looking at. And she goes, oh, yeah, that's that's it. That's my town. That's my village. All right. So are we going to stash the horses like Demovim said, or are we going to ride in as Hall Mac said? Well, if it's a bandit town, we might want to stash the horses because they won't be able to notice where they're at. Yeah. But if it's not a bandit town, they might have a stable where we can just pay to stash it for a little um, bit. You feel a little tug at your clothes again, Demovin? Uh. And you look down and Emily's looking up at you with like a curious look in her eyes. She goes, what's a bamble at town? <laughs> what is that? I don't know what a bamble it is. Bandit. Uh, a bandit. What's a bandit town? All it means is that it's a town that was taken over by bad people who want to take all your money and valuables. Not, not people, just person. That one. Just Reinar. That is very interesting. He, I, I, I he came say in I'm sorry. and he came in and said we were his bandits now. And he owned all of us and we had to do what he said or he was going to kill all of us. Especially us. Especially us. And she points at herself. Oh. Hmm. I feel a shiver going down my spine. <laughs> I, I just say, I don't like this. <laughs> Alright. I like this a considerable amount. Well, now we only know there's only one person, but now I'm like wondering, like, is this like, a, are we following to, into a trap of a wizard, of a evil wizard? <laughs> one person. That doesn't make, it, 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 it almost seems... Uh, I just don't know. I don't want to attack, kill, and it's the townsfolk who have done no, no wrong. Um, uh, I told you they're not bad people. It's my parents, the, my mommy, and my daddy—they're not bad people. They were forced to do it. They, Reinar said, if they, if he, he, they had to steal for him, or he was going to take my head. I look, I look at her, I'm like, huh. I'm just trying to comprehend this, I'm like, what are we doing with here? <laughs> well, not great people. <laughs> it would seem that there is a very bad person who is manipulating some very not-so-bad people into doing very bad things on their behalf. I also think we killed one of them. Well, we could use non-lethal force on the townspeople, just kind of knock them out, maybe, yeah, or cast fear I'm, on them. I'm not the one who's going to be talking to Gregory's family. You know Gregory? <laughs> oh, boy. Not it. <laughs> Jim puts his um, finger on his nose. Not it. Gregory's been missing for a while now. What happened? Do you know what happened? I know that people were looking for him. Emily, I'm going to have to be very frank with you. Gregory is dead. Oh. We killed him. Oh, well. She just kind of <laughs> shrugs a bit. He was... I look at, Gregory I look at, was... Uh, he was nice, but he... Was, he stayed to himself. He he liked himself. He, he stayed in his house a lot, and he just disappeared one day. And honestly... The town said that they were better without him because he was a thief. I, I don't know what he, they meant, that, but and they wouldn't explain it, but yeah. He looked like a dragon when he came at us. <gasps> a dragon? Her eyes just go wide and her, she's like, her face lights up. You fought a dragon? No, we fought a Gregory that looked like a dragon. Oh, Gregory? A dragon? <laughs> no, he was a water balloon that looked like a dragon. 
<laughs> now her, her, she goes from, like her face goes from like pure excitement and bewilderment to just pure and utter confusion. Like, huh? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. When he died, he popped like a water balloon, but it was Ew. blood instead of water. <laughs> God. It's a blood balloon, not a water balloon. It's just, just like blood bag. <laughs> I'm literally just sitting there and I just face palm after I give uh, Ginger a look after he says well, he, we, we killed him. Um, and I give him a look. I scold, I scold Ginger for a second. And then after I hear that, I'm like, oh, God. Paul Mac. Face palm. <laughs> when you face palm, you kind of like take a moment and look down at your gloves and you notice a spot of Gregory blood that you missed. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I wipe it I wipe it on the cart. I'm like it's dried. Oh, it's crispy. <laughs> it's dang. It's just my it's just my gauntlet. I'm like, ugh, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Little bit. Like to you, anybody. that's a couple of minutes worth of patchwork. You can get that out easily. Yeah, nothing nothing a quick uh, a little bit of water and some elbow grease can't can't fix. <laughs> And right. Ginger kind of pipes up. Nobody's Wait, you, you, in my eyes. You can wash the stains innocent. off the armor, but never out of your soul. <laughs> We're doing. Let me take a look at something right here. All right. Well, if we're near the town, I think we can probably just head head in on foot. See what we can see. What we can see. Oh, okay. Never mind. That's the, the, that, the way that's my music just got really tense. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not on my end. <laughs> Uh, just, oh I, yeah, I as we stash the one I posted in the ambiance. As we stash the horses away, I'm gonna give them uh, like a, something sugary or salty from one of my rations. Okay. And are you all attempting to, to like obscure the cart, or are you just putting them uh, off I'm the trail? Obscure. I'm I'm gonna obscure it. Some, I I grab my sword, cut a few branches off, and uh and bushes, and I just cover the, the cart, hopefully to make it look relatively inconspicuous. Okay, give me a nature check. One, yeah. Oh, crap, there goes my dice. Oh, also, up. the hall mech? Quick reminder for your uh, cantrips, my friend. There's something you have that can help with this particular instance, and a can lot of other that? instances that you could have uh, helped other people in, too. Yeah, uh, I even thought about that. I didn't even know if I could roll it on myself. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I guess I cast guidance on myself. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, I'm gonna um, cast mage armor. Okay. On myself. Mark down your uh, spell slot use for that, but uh, make sure you um, make uh, uh, annotate your new armor class. Also, I don't remember if I sent you the updated mm. character sheet, but I also have danger of sense now. Ooh. Um, I got a 13 total from uh, my D4 and my D20. Okay, um, you, yeah, do you take, a, like, a lot of branches and, you know, l large brush and such like that and cover the cart as best you can? Um, you actually hitch the horses away from the cart a little bit further in. Um, in a nice little clearing area, um, you don't notice too many, like, broken branches or, or feet in the, or, or foot tracks, or, excuse me, tracks, animal tracks along the ground that would signify that this would be, like, predatory area, so you think that the horses will be pretty safe here for, for a while. Um, so you go back, and when you try to go back to see like how good of a job that you did for the cart, it actually takes you a little while to find it because of how well you kind of secured it and how well you covered it up. You actually walked right past it thinking it was just a large bush. So with that knowledge in mind, you feel like you have done pretty well at hiding the uh, carriage and finding a nice safe spot for the horses. All right, I I, I put my I put my sword in my scabbard, uh, check my cross I uh, check my crossbow, see if it's uh, ready, put the safety on, and <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> all righty. So you all um, take up arms and ready yourselves and start heading down the, the road, or what are you doing? Uh, we'll start heading down the road. Uh, Emily, you stay close to me, okay? Okay. You stay behind him. Yeah. <laughs> Follow my lead. <laughs> Do not be visible. Just don't. 
All right. I guess we continue on. <clears throat> so, you all take um, a, a moment, um, collect yourselves, nod to each other, and start heading down um, the southern road towards uh, Smith's and just kind of um, acting as a traveling people. Um, eventually, you get to a part where the the trail kind of curves away from the um hold on let me actually do something real quick the the um the road actually like kind of curves away from the the road a bit okay that one i'm actually going to update the map here but i needed to do this before and i completely forgot because i suck do not it's been a busy that week. Yeah. Oh god, everybody's gone. It's so large. Oh, oh. oh god damn. <laughs> We're here now! <laughs> you can see like the brush strips on oh, the Let me put... I love, yeah, I love other maps. maps. It's really pretty. Where's the other map? Oh crap. There we go. Put that one away. Yeah, these maps are really good quality. Uh... Exclamation mark Ed's maps for a link to the shop where we got this from, by the way. Thank you all again for letting me use these. I will say, I, I will agree with you here on that. Uh, I love the brush strokes on that. That was really pretty. Yeah. And now we need to move work. this down before it covers up my Twitch alerts. So I need to make sure I Yeah, because I talked to them and I was like, is it okay if we use these online? So I wanted to be sure. And they were like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but we they still were, want to make sure we crest them. This was really, I mean, they were really nice. Yeah, and absolutely amazing art. Um, so yeah, you all, uh, the road eventually like curves off a bit away from like that creek that's been running along for so like running along with you all for so long, and you kind of miss it because like the whole entire run you've been listening to the nice little babbling brook kind of going along the the rocks and hearing the occasional plinks of, you know, things falling into it. Um, even, like, the insects that buzz around it and all the frogs that kind of gather around to feed on all those insects. Like, you liked that little creek that was running along the, the trail. Um, but now that you kind of go further off into um, the woods, the, the road actually kind of opens up a little bit to where it's like the road seems like maybe there was something that happened here before and they had to make an alternate route around, but then they maybe cleared that obstruction and so they just kind of kept these trails going and people just chose whichever one they wanted to go on. Um, but as soon as you enter in this clearing... Uh, Demovin, remind me of your armor class. Yeah. Uh, 14, I think. Hang on. Yeah, 14. 14. Um, you, as uh, as you start, like, kind of looking around, like, trying to think of where there might be, like, a, a spot of an ambush or something, suddenly there's an arrow in your um, right shoulder. You're just kind of, like, Ooh. looking off to your left when all of a sudden, thump, and you look over and there's just, an, a, there's, you know, it's just in your arm. Um, six points of piercing damage. Ow. Yeah, that was a good shot. <laughs> um, that's what you actually hear um, up in the trees. You hear a startled, oh my god, I actually hit them. Um, and then a, a guy comes running out from behind one of the bushes, um, brandishing what looks like a lid, like a wooden lid of a cauldron that he's holding like the, just like the handle part for. And he's holding it like a makeshift shield. And in his other hand, he has what appears to be a fire poker that he's kind of like pointing at you menacingly. Um, he has strapped over his chest in um, like burlap rope, like that brown rough rope type stuff. I can't remember what the name of it is. Um, hemp, hemp and rope, um, tied in hemp and rope. There appears to be what looks like the front door of a fire stove, just kind of strapped to his chest and like a pot on his head and he's pointing the fork over at you and he says in, in the name of lord reinar give me all your give me all your oh 
oh my fuck, is that? And he throws his stuff on the ground and just starts crying and running towards you all. His hands just outstretched and he screams, Emily, oh my God, Emily. Emily breaks ranks from you all and starts running forward and towards him. and goes, daddy, daddy. And she jumps up into his arms. Um, you start hearing um, some scuffling and breaking branches off to the right and running out of the woods, like throwing down what looks like to be a makeshift bow made from a branch and um, sinew just thrown off uh, to the side um a woman comes running out from the uh the tree line um uh, wearing what looks to be excessive amounts of fur like um clothing like for fur robes and fur um just on her backs and on her sides and stuff like anything that she could wear to be um like maybe hidden or some sort of like makeshift padding armor or such um, but as she's come running um, out of the woods, even some of those come flying off of her as she's screaming, My dear girl! My poor precious girl! Oh my god! Oh my god! She's like They all just kind of meet up together and just start hugging, and the two parents start kissing the little girl um, just affectionately, just tears just pouring, pouring down to their faces. Um, the, girl, the woman actually looks up at you, Demovin, and goes, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't actually mean to hit you, I meant to shoot in front of you, I'm so terrible, I'm so, so sorry, thank you so much for rescuing my little girl, oh my god, thank you! Um, I, 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 even though my, basically, and then I'll hold a commotion, my, so I drew my sword as, as, as Demovin got shot, but then all of a sudden, the, as I saw Emily just leave my side, I, as they both started, I, I, I let off a sigh and uh, just walk up, put, walk up with my sword and shield drawn, uh, walk up to them as I just, was basically trailing Emily as she went running because I was not going to let her leave my side without me making sure she's okay. And as that all happens, Ginger kind of winces a little bit and like looks away and takes a, like a step back. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt, so I just didn't say anything. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> anything else anybody else is doing right now? Um, Jin is just gonna kind of hang back and watch. He's gonna look around, even though he's the only one with poor vision, but he's gonna... I mean, Demovin was shot. <laughs> yeah. So, he's... <laughs> I'm just kind of staring kinda, at it. It's just, just like, ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm not even, not even, like, painfully. I'm just like, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stick in my arm. <laughs> I'll yeah. just pull it out. <laughs> I would pretty much say, like, for for you, the sense of damage isn't necessarily pain. It's more of just like a, n a numbness that spreads and makes things much more difficult to to do. Like right now, your arm feels really stiff and 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 slow and and not really responsive. Is like six points of piercing damage to your arm. That's that's massive. Like that that I probably know, went either. in and punctured the like the left or the right lung a little bit. But to you, it doesn't matter. It's just a pin. You're just a pin cushion. But you know, it the the damage is seemingly impeding the process of the limbs being as responsive as they need. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying that things aren't hard or anything like that. I'm just saying he doesn't feel pain. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Pain is meaningless to me. It barely, it like barely registers. Like, huh. Like for me, I was thinking it was going to become like one of those Ace Ventura 2 moments where he gets speared in the knees. Just like, ah! 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 ah. But no, you're just looking at it. And to me, that's just even better because like you look at it and then you cock your head to the side and maybe peck at it a little bit. <laughs> What does this taste like? <laughs> oh, this is gonna suck. Tink, tink, tink. <laughs> yeah, and then just Palmat comes over and with a sickening, dull, and moistureless thunk, you pull the arrow out of yeah. Demovin's arm. That's Almost exactly like a cork. I Almost like pulling that's the cork out of the box. <laughs> that's basically what I would do too. After the whole thing, after they're just over there hugging, I look back at you and I just take, put my hand on his, sh his shoulder and grab the arrow and just pull it out. <laughs> so um after a moment um you know of reconciliation and everything like they're they're looking at her like are you okay are you okay she's like i'm okay i'm okay i was hungry but they gave me foods and 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 
they they didn't rescue me. I ran away. I didn't want you to have to keep doing this. I was worried about you, and and I I saw a moment and I got away. And and as soon as she says that, like both of the parents just immediately go pale. Like the uh, the guy actually or the husband gets actually very angry, and looks at her and goes, "How could you do that? Do you have any idea what would have happened to you if he caught you?" You wouldn't be here anymore. You saw what he did to that tree. You would have been the same. You should have just stayed there. We would have been able to get you out. We almost had the payment done. We would have been free of him. But then she looks up at him and goes, But daddy, what if he just made the payment bigger again? He did it before. He could do it again. And he just falls silent and just kind of looks off to the side. I pipe in and just interrupt him. I'm like, she needed help. I, we need, I wanted to help her. And he looks over at you and goes, thank you. Thank you, adventurer. Bless you. Call me Halmak. Halmak. Thank you so much. My name is Harold. Thank you so much for saving my poor Emily. What can you tell us about this guy? He's horrible. Absolutely horrible. He's Where is he? enthralled by some sort of powerful magic. He he raised his hand at a tree and it just exploded right before our eyes. It was terrifying to behold. He's. Um, did you did you see something about a few nights ago from at a distance? Uh, something like that. He's still just focused on why his arm is cold. Sorry. <laughs> Why do I bother asking? <laughs> well, he, he got a pretty hurt, and everybody's just like, "Oh, let's have a casual conversation." Well, is there yeah, six points of damage ain't fucking nothing to sneeze at. Even if he's not reacting to it, that was still a lot of damage. <laughs> Made. Point yeah, damage. I almost died at eight. You know, at a seven point. <laughs> electric damage. <laughs> we won't talk about. <laughs> oh, you mean my taser? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you're saying he's some kind of a, a wizard? I, 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 I don't know what types of terms or conditions he might have. Like, all I know is this, his magic is way, way more powerful than it should be. Like, obviously, we all have our own magic abilities, but his go way beyond what it should be. It's not normal. It's not right. Where is he? He's, he's in our town, he's off to the east, and points off to, like, the, off to the, um, left-hand side of the, uh, area that you all are at right now, uh, pointing off in the eastward towards direction. He's taken up residence in one of our biggest huts, he tries to do everything he can to make everything more extravagant than it really is, he forces us to steal for him so that way he can live a cushier life meanwhile we're all forced to eat gruel it's just you guys you you, th you three stay here emily you stay with your parents Jen, okay demo van ginger let's go be safe well hang on before we go can i have something for my arm oh it's starting to throb yeah, demo ben, and that's potion. odd for you things don't normally throb <laughs> I'm looking at the people who shot me. I'll be like, you got something for this? The, the uh, woman yeah, just like goes like pale and for this. like just like she gets this look on her face, just like uh, just like she almost looks scared. And she goes, I'm so I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do it. We we don't have anything. I'm so, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Some of that jewelry you've okay. been collecting for Mr. Reinar then. That's we don't wrong, have anything it. with us. Anything we get, we immediately give to him. Useless. All right, let's go. Ginger, do you got any bit potions in that in that holding? Bag of holding? Uh, we have one spare one. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, six total. Did you, or no, four. Wait, hold on. We had no. We had yeah. We had last wait, last last time in session one. We had somebody who donated a thousand bits, and half of it went for healing potions, and then. The other half was for a uh, chaos roll. Um, so yeah, you have six total. The... Yeah. Right, and we distributed them at the beginning of the stream. So everybody should have that. one, and then okay. one extra yeah. in the bag of holding. Okay. I have two because I'm the one that got the one from Ivy. Okay. 
Okay, well. I guess you get to decide what you want to do with them. Well, that, that included the one. Yeah, IV. but it was like, why would I? Why that that that's six, and there's four of us. How would we each have one, and then one extra? I didn't. That's know. five. I think because I was under the assumption that we had put them in the bag of holding. I didn't realize that you still had them or had some of them. No, I I, I, I still had the one that I had. Just one hundred bits. Okay, and, then and I had suddenly six. the bag of holding uh, opens up, and another healing potion comes falling <laughs> out. <laughs> So there we go. So, yeah. Actually, no. I take that back. I take that back. God damn it. Yeah, it's a healing potion. <laughs> oh, no. I made a potion well, there table, There you go. Thank, thank all my god cat treats. <laughs> thank you, cat treats. Thank the cat you. thanks you. <laughs> so the cat is now healing the bird. He's yeah. I mean, it's there. Uh, chaos, right? Yeah. Yippee. And I mean, I wasn't going to use my own supply when I can extort these poor people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll drink a potion, fine. Alright, uh, <laughs> uh, I do believe it's uh, 2d4 plus 2 healing potion, or uh, healing. So go ahead and do yeah, that. I, roll, I, I rolled a four, and then the plus two would make it six. Well, there you go. You are fully healed. Nice. No thanks to the task people. <laughs> so the recovery, or people. like as you drink this healing potion and the recovery magic takes um, effect over your undead frame, it's almost the sound of like old leather being stretched out. <laughs> He's just gonna kind of like flex his hand a bit and be like, that's better. Yeah, and, well, it, it moves without issue. <clears throat> well, I guess uh, we march up to where uh, this Lord Reinar is. Okay. Oh, well, we're just going straight to him? I no, I him. say we go around the edge of the town and to the east, like they said he was, and try to ambush him. Well, he said he probably. We need to find out where he is first. But then again, where are we gonna do this? They said they were to the east. True, but that's where their home is. That's what they said. Well, it's if it's the place. town, then they're probably oh. like holed up in the town. I was gonna say if these the, the those town people are anything like those town people that we just met, we could probably just walk right on in. Well, what I'm Hopefully thinking is they, they overtook again. their town. That's what I'm thinking. One person. Well, yeah, one person. One person and is turning the entire told town to and shoot on sight. You did get shot once. Point made. I can get shot again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I healed that six damage. That's another six. <laughs> you don't know that. I mean, let's walk right into the mouse trap. Okay. <laughs> sure. I mean, I will. Like you can I don't enough. care. Uh, why don't you fly over and do reconnaissance first? Or I can just cast Sanctuary on myself and walk right in. I don't know what that does. Sanctuary. It uh, makes me untargetable for a full minute. Well, do you think you can check out the whole town in under a minute? Go for it. You I wasn't mean? talking about the whole town. I was just talking about Mr. Reinar himself. Yeah. We can have a little chat. Have a little chat, Cox Gun. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is uh, they're all scared and frightened, and we just have to make ourselves imposing. That's all imposing I'm saying. Enough, imposing enough that they don't make it. They don't. They're they're strike us, but uh, imposing enough that uh, we don't get. They don't uh, go into attack. <laughs> Imposing enough that they hesitate and that we can get some words in. I, I, I don't think that's gonna work. I really don't. I don't think you can reason with this guy. He's a fear yeah. We're talking. We're not. We're not talking about this guy. We're talking about the people that he's fear mongering. Right. 
See, he's that's just in the, he's just in the big hut in the town. If we can convince the town's people that we're going to remove this big man from the big hut, maybe they maybe they don't they don't they, they stop trying to kill us. I'm just saying, the town's people themselves could be reasoned with. All right, so take, why don't take we the ask the people the that here. are here who would be the best person to talk to there? That sounds like a good idea. That actually sounds like an amazing idea. <laughs> like, if we, if we scream a name, if we're like, we're here to talk to this person, maybe they won't shoot us. Yeah, who's the... So I'm going to turn to the father and be like, okay, who's the best person for us to discuss things with or to get them to get the people out of the town so we don't have to worry about collateral damage? He looks up at you with, like, a confused look in his face, like, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Who is your town's leader that is not Reinar? Who do you look up to? We don't Who have do you respect one. the most? We're just a poor farming community. We don't have a leader. We don't have a mayor or anything like that, if that's what you're referring to. We just are a collective of poor families that have always just lived in this area. We're just can, trying can to I establish... Get- a life out here. Can we get some names of families that you talk to regularly? Or um, somebody that the townspeople respect? Names, yeah, sure. That's something I'm very good with. Let me tell you. Um, absolutely. Um, well, there's Gregory, but uh, nobody's <laughs> really seen him for, for Gregory's a while. dead. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. Gregory's dead. We already oh, killed him. Well, it was unfortunate. Very that's sad. That's a bummer. <laughs> that's a bummer, I guess. Um, well, there's John and his wife, um, Ca- Carol, of course. Everybody knows John and Carol. Um, oh, there's also, um, um, what's his name? Um, Arthur. Yeah, uh, Arthur and, and his, um, life partner, Drew. Yeah, those two absolute, just rock. Uh, a pillar in the community, those two. We, we love, we love, um, Arthur and, and Drew. Um, uh, there's also, um, Seth. Uh, uh, S- Seth. Um, he, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a little bit of a flamboyant kind of character, but, you know, he, he, he's, he's got a good pair on his shoulders, um, you know. Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of names. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all of the people in the oh, town, and then, though? And then, that's um, like five people. His wife, Mary, <laughs> pipes up from behind and goes, Oh, don't forget about Beth! Oh, oh, right, Beth. Of course, uh, uh, Seth's girlfriend, Beth. Okay, um, okay, okay. Never mind. <laughs> that is six people, and we are four people. We can totally talk our way through this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, there's also Angel. Uh, and, okay, we're, we're done. And, okay. I'm and just... Sue. <laughs> and, Maybe we should just start walking. Monica. Yeah, let's go. Stop. And Lou. <laughs> that's enough. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally not just totally randomly picking out names and writing them down in my notebook. Totally not. <laughs> no, not at all. I, uh, I didn't even bother taking notes. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, as you all begin making your way to the on, east, I need to ask one more question before we leave. One that seems very important to me. Oh God! Which two are immediately watching the gate into town, or which ones are usually immediately watching the gate into town, so we can just shout their names and make them stop? Again, sir, you're talking in ways I don't understand. What do you mean gate? We don't have a gate. We just have buildings <laughs> who's, who's and farmland. Who's watching the way into town? Whoever's out you know and about, I mean? whoever's probably working the land with the crops in that day, I don't know. We're, oh my god. We're farmers, not military men. <laughs> you I'm gonna look over at Ginger. I'm gonna look over at Ginger and whisper, now we know why they got taken over. <laughs> G- Ginger is actually uncharacteristically shitish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, let's go. These people are dumb. I don't know oh anything. God. The only one that's cool is their <laughs> daughter. <laughs> She's gonna hey, kids are cool, man. Day. Kids are awesome. 
very much so. Extraordinary. Yes, they are. Uh, all right. <laughs> we were in its autonomous collective. <laughs> help, help, we're being repressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's one of like the best parts of that movie, Catrice. Oh my god. Anyway. <sighs> Alright. So, you all begin making your way off towards the east. Um, the, the, the land actually begins to slope into an uphill for a while. And but it does it doesn't it's not too steep and it doesn't take long before the top of this hill does start to give way. And at the top of this hill, um, it kind of gives you a nice clear view of the uh, town down below. You all uh, are approaching from the um, the right hand side of this map. So the, this tree line that's going between these rows here on the right hand side is um, where y'all are coming from and as you look down you see like this poor dirt road um, just kind of stretching out um, it seems like maybe this is an offshoot this this dirt road here uh, is an offshoot from the main road that you all were traveling on um, but then there's this another smaller trail that kind of branches off from this secondary trail and leads off into the town um, as you can see, it's just a whole bunch of run-down shacks. There's no wall or anything. In fact, uh, one of the buildings, the one that's kind of in the middle on the southern and mo uh, most end, actually is laying in ruins. The, uh, the, the roof is collapsed in and it just seems to have been left abandoned. Um, some of the... Uh, like buildings, uh, the roofs of the buildings actually have like holes in them, and some of the walls um, also have large holes in them. And you also notice that in the field near the uh, farmhouse, um, you can actually see what looks to be the ruins of a tree that had looks to be like maybe it got struck by lightning or something there's just like a blackened stump and just a bunch of charred wood that's laid in all sorts of directions around it um everybody give me perception checks as you glance down onto this um uh village so that way i can let you all know what finer details you may see I uh, I got a seven twelve total. Seven total. I got a nineteen plus four. Mm. Okay, uh, Ginger, you got four. Hallmac, you got what? Uh, seven total, I believe. Okay, Demovin. Got uh, twelve. And Jin. Uh, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Bam. So Jin over here just like. While y'all are kind of glancing and squinting your eyes and kind of taking a look down, Jin literally put, puts his hands and cups them around his eyes like he's trying to make the, like, g like night vision goggles or binoculars or something, and he just zeroes in an unerring accuracy looking down upon the village. Um, Ginger, Demovin, and Hallmack, you're not able to really make out any kind of details at all. Everything is just too far away. Demovin, you're able to make out some, like, moving shapes and such like that. But Jin, you notice that um, there are people that are working in the farmland up in the north. It looks to be two or maybe three guys. You can't really tell because of how they're standing. Um... And there also appears to be some sort of commotion going on in the quote-unquote what you gather might be the town square. Um, there is an individual that is standing there. It looks to be clad in something that's shiny because you can kind of see light reflecting off, reflecting off of it. That's kind of what caught your eye in this area to begin with. Um, and they seem to be yelling or shouting like they have their hands up in the air and they're just roaring down 
and there's you can see somebody else that's like down on the ground that's just kind of cowering um, down in the dirt like laying on their back their hands are up in like a defensive kind of position and and they seem to kind of be like frantic in a way um, and you actually see the, the character the the figure that's standing above them actually kick them in their stomach um, there seems to be a crowd of people that are around but after a few moments the person the figure turns to them and like waves a hand and they all just like turn away almost ashamedly or almost out of like reflex and just immediately walk away from the scene to which the guy turns back to the person down on the ground starts pointing at them screaming and starts kicking again found him so i'm relay a He's beating up somebody in the center of town. We need to go save them. Let's do it. Do we? Uh, well, we don't quite know the situation yet. We just we rushed into the to... middle of town? We're in the middle we think... of... That's where we he think... is. I say we uh... sneak up, uh, use the building to sneak up on him, see what we get, get gather what we in, and, 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 and take care of this fucker once and for all. He may end up killing well, we this guy know. before we get there. He's well, just beating him. We, we don't know if this guy is just maybe the this rhino dude got some lackeys. Yeah, it could, it could just be could someone be beating him. the poor farmer. I don't think they're gonna kill him. I thought it was only him, no lackeys. We don't know. We were told that the thing was gonna change in our way. True. All right. Either way, let's make our way down there. Keep, keep a low profile. Yep. How did our situations change? It's like we we swapped. You were gonna walk in. And I'm going no no no. We need to sneak in now. I'm like hey we gotta go in. And you're going no no no. We gotta sneak in. Totally fine with. Up. I'm just totally fine with walking in. I'm just stating. I don't think he's gonna kill that man. If he's okay. beating someone in the middle of town, it's just a public display. Well, he turned everybody away from him. That was well. It's not like we're sneaking in. I mean, by what a low profile. I mean, just keep it, keep it tame. Don't act as if we're basically we're here to kill this guy yet. Just basically act as if we're just people passing through. I yeah, think we go talk to the people up in the north. I actually just got an idea to do something real quick. Uh oh. Um, let me. Oh on. no. No, no. This is this is to kind of help with um, me pointing out where certain things are happening. Oh, nice. Very helpful. <laughs> um, let me make it this color so it stands out. I got a dot. Woo. So that's happening right there. Oh, there we go. And we are it's like over right in the middle of the town. So yeah, we're off to the and we're off to the far right on the on the east. I'm assuming we're by the river part. Yeah. Yeah. I can actually. Sorry, the map is so dark. Just hush up, you. It's amazing. Well, the I'm going to mark you all. It was too dark, and I had actually lightened it a little bit, but I should have done more. Wait, why didn't that one? Yes, it, it, it is better than what it was before. Yeah. It was like, I, I could, I could ah, barely it see it on okay, my monitor. Hold on. Delete that one. Um. Okay, we'll keep that one like that. I don't know how finicky my monitor is with dark colors. I got to make another one. <clears throat> A new color for two. This is actually very helpful. Thank you, Pedro. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're not gonna lie. I've, I've kind of given up on maps on my stream. <laughs> my ADHD brain could not handle it. Well, the heavier stream open on my other one? monitor. Is it this one? Oh, because I didn't even. Um, I would get too focused on listening and would forget to change the maps. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Also, I think I sent you a message. It was just a little doodle. Uh, like oh, you flying away. Give me a second, because I, I, I just messed oh. up. Oh, no worries. I'm just saying, we'll just whenever. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it in a sec. Well, probably not in a sec, but later. Okay. This is being. You got this. I literally had to delete it and do it again because it's being. Dot. That's one thing I don't like about OBS is like when you copy and paste something, sometimes it makes it its own separate thing. Sometimes it makes it like when you edit one, both change. I hate that. Yeah. 
Same. Especially when okay, control so, dead, like, messes up your overlay. What you all are, uh, what Jin is seeing and is now portraying to you all is happening at the blue dot. Y'all are at the pink dot. <laughs> Alright, say we head up to, uh, the, 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 the house that's basically, uh, in the center of the town, directly, uh, almost parallel to us, uh, to, uh, go to there so we can get better look at and handle the situation but you mean like sort of around the buildings yeah just so we can at least get an idea of what we're dealing with yeah. then we'll make our strike or so our go dollar. around the woods to that long house in the south that's too that'll take then, too long that'll take yeah. too long before the person's gonna get in it's probably gonna get more hurt at, but as we as we waste time okay Um, as you all are um, watching, a, uh, trying to make up a plan, Jin, you look back over to see if the situation has changed at all, and it has. Um, there is now another figure um, that has come out and is now basically like pointing and yelling at the other figure. Um, go ahead and give me another perception check if you can see any kind of details on this person. Which one is he yelling at? The one on the ground or the one that's kicking? No, he was yelling at the one at the... No, like... <clears throat> okay, oh, oh, I see what your question is. Um, no, the person that came out is yelling at the person that was doing the kicking. Okay. Um, 14. Uh, 14. That's good enough. Um, okay, kind of, kind of still going after your, uh, previous role there. Um, yeah, this individual is female. That's something that you can tell. Like the person that is on the ground that got that was getting kicked is male. The person that is up, you know, you know standing up and was doing the kicking is also obviously male. Um, but the person that ran out and is now, you know, yelling and pointing at the guy who was doing the kicking is female. You can tell by like just the figure, the fact they're wearing what looks to be a dress and they have longer hair. So they look like lackeys. Yeah, what? he's not alone. I don't think. And I'm going to relay to the other that this woman ran out. She's now yelling at the guy who was kicking the guy on the ground. So maybe he does have lackeys. It sounds like yeah, I, I, I get a feeling that, sounds... that a guy like him wouldn't do it very hard. All right, let's go check it out then. I want to relay to her. Let's, let's move. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Well, <clears throat> we're in a shit turn trouble, aren't we? Oh, no. Move. Um, so, Jin, as you all, like, get to, you know, stand up and move out, and you look back up in that area, you look and watch in horror as the guy raises, um, something, like, he raises up his right hand, which is holding something, which begins to, um, glow with a bright, like, blackish, bluish energy, and an energy ray fires out of it and slams into the chest of the female, and she literally bursts. Hmm. Oh, shit. So much for having a lackey. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, I, my you guy is on the ground, the even lackey. from here, you all can hear. <laughs> I'm not waiting longer. I, I start, I start, I, I dash. I dash weapons drawn. Oh boy, here we go. Oh no. <laughs> As you start running towards the uh, area, Hallmac, you actually see the guy on the ground, like, get up. The scream, you monster! The guy actually swips around, points the whatever he has in his right hand at the guy, and another ray fires out of it. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> He's paced. Huh? Hmm. The, another yeah, ray no, of energy was... comes out of the rod, hits the guy in the like the guy that was in the on the ground. Like he gets up to do something, like he looks like he's about to swing on the guy. Um, an, a, an energy ray hits him in his chest, and it pierces through, and actually smashes into the ground behind him. And like it all, it, his body just kind of hangs there for a moment, and he just slumps down, and blood just starts pouring out onto the streets. Oh shit. 
watch out for whatever he has in his hand. Stop it! He's running away. <laughs> Actually, I'm going. It's gonna cost an action, but I'm gonna cast Fog Cloud directly in front of Hall Mac. I want to make it so he uh, he he get yeah, his vision is obscured because uh, he's better off to us alive instead of running directly headfirst into a guy who just turned another man into liquid. <laughs> into goo. Okay. What the hell? What do you want? What are you doing? You're you are your... better alive than dead, friend. Stay back. He's too dangerous for you alone. He's too dangerous for us all alone right now. We need to think. Okay, so what are y'all doing? Because uh, the, the, like, the area that you all were running to and the area that, like, all of this was happening is now obscured by a fog cloud. Y'all are not able to see what's going on on the other side. That's not good, honestly. Oh, no, the moment, the moment Hallmat calms down, I'm just gonna... Can I get rid of it? Yeah, it's concentration, so I'm just gonna not concentrate on it anymore. Okay. Uh, it was when that just happens, to stop him. All right, uh, when you drop it down... Um, you have you actually do it just in time to notice that this um, this figure that just murdered the two people has now like turned like down the street um, and it, he's kind of going down in this direction now like he's going uh, he went around the, this uh, building's corner and is like heading down this way you can't stand idly by and having him kill any more innocent people can't yeah, just have ourselves die either. Then let's go get. Then let's go together. I agree. All right, let's go. We need to get going. We gotta get something going here before more people die. Rest in peace, Seth and Beth. You were loved. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yo! Holy shit! Cat treats! Thank you so much for that! Damn! We got a $20 donation from Cat what? treats. Oh, Thank I you so, so much. Now, oh, Cat no. treats. Uh -oh. Now you just does. bought yourself a Bane or Boone brisket. What flavor oh, would no. you like tonight? Would you like, would you like that flavor of a Boone? Or do you want a Bane? Cats well, just to let you know that the bane is really spicy and the boon is really sweet. But what if they like spicy food? <laughs> Take your pick, sweet, sweet or savory. <laughs> there you go, sweet or spicy. I'm, I again, I, I say to Demovan, why are we just idl idly waiting by? We have to go now. As I, I'm gonna, I roll. I want to uh, persuade. <laughs> I don't think we can persuade. He just murdered two people. You really yeah, think you're like, persuade yeah, like him? doing that between um, like characters is oh. a really more tough of a thing thing to do, you know? Okay. Oh, it's let weird. Cappy roll. Oh. Odds oh. is a bane. If you roll an even, it's a boon. Oh, oh my. No pressure, oh, baby. No pressure. Uh, four. A four, it's even! Let's uh, go! <laughs> also, why did this change again? Why does that always change right there? That is so weird. Okay, um, alright, so you yeah. got a boon! Thank um, you so me. as you all are arguing in this moment, um, Jin and Ginger, as you are kind of like still in the back and kind of catching up to these two that kind of like ran forward, like I would see Hallmack running, uh, going off and then Dem of them being like, damn it, and having to like chase off after him, and then you two are like, oh, oh, fuck, fuck, and going like after them too. Um, while those two are talking and conversating, you all watch as the sky above the town, um, like it was, it was just still really cloudy. From the uh, from the storm that had just passed, the gemstone storm that had just passed over, and um, but the sky above the um, town opens up 
um, and, and sunlight, bright sunlight streams down over the town. And as this happens, all of you suddenly hear, What in the hell? What? What's Um, yeah. Well, he's being occupied, so I think we should. We can't, we're I'm, free to run let's, up. Let's move. Let's move. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. Okay. He's being so. so. Um, let me do one thing real quick. I actually want to. This. Okay. So, the party. Mad dashes over to where they can finally see what is going on with uh, Lord Reinar. So as you all come across uh, down this main path into this main area, um, which is now like just covered in blood, by the way. Um, oh, oh, hold on. Actually, I can do this. Um, one moment, one moment. No, not room. really. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? No, I have it. There it is. <laughs> Bam! Wait, that you might have. There it is. I knew it. So, um, as you all come running down this uh, trail and come around the uh, corner of the building, you all witness uh, this quote unquote Lord Reinar individual for the very first time. Um, this is a Does human like being. Um, he is a human being. Hold on. He's a human um, with very thin, emaciated type features, a pale bluish type skin, and just beady black eyes. Um, his hair is um, very short and miscut uh, in some places, almost like he cut his own hair with a pair of scissors and he did a horrible job of it. And it's greasy and unwashed. Um, but he himself is, uh, cloaked in, um, what appears to be half-plate armor. Um, so medium medium armor, really good hefty armor, and it has a reddish sheen to it. Um, in his left hand, he actually has, like, attached into the suit of armor, or almost into the gauntlet of the armor, um, is a shield. And in his right hand, he's holding what appears to be a rod of sorts, um, but the end of it has some sort of weird-looking slug-like creature. You're not entirely sure what exactly you're looking at. Um, but this individual is uh, currently being suspended in the air by an invisible force. Um, the uh, sunlight that has coalesced and poured down on this area thanks to Cat Treats' boon um, is actually... Um, holding him aloft up in the air um both of his arms are like basically like outstretched to his sides so he's kind of t-posed a little bit um his chest is kind of pushed up a little bit but he's frantically like trying to pull himself and you can see what looks to be like these golden tethers that are wrapped around his arms and kind of suspending him up into the air but with every tug that he does you see the um, the tethers slowly like lose some of the uh, golden color and almost seem to fade away. Hmm. So whatever is holding him there doesn't seem like it's going to be holding him there for much longer. But currently he is suspended, he is immobile, and there he is right in front of you. So and he looks Reiner, right. He looks down at you. Well, he literally just screamed, "Oh, how dare you let go of me? I am Lord Reinar. You let me go this instant." You may not have heard that because I scream when I get into character sometimes and my microphone cuts out, so if that ever happens, y'all need to let me yeah. know. Yeah, I <laughs> he heard Reinar, but I couldn't tell if it was somebody talking to Reinar. If it was <laughs> he looks... Uh, at, at first, like, he doesn't notice you all are there. He's like, eh, let me go! Just what is this? This group! You don't know who I am! I am Lord! Let me go this instant! He looks over at you all and he says, Dear you get me down here right now. You, your lord, 
You do what I say. That I was say... my cast fireball. Da oh, go ahead. Wait, we need to roll for initiative before we do anything. Wait. I don't know. He's being I mean... held right now. <laughs> I, well, my, yeah. Uh, you can definitely get a surprise um, rounding. Because, like, right now, he's not able to really do anything to defend himself. He is currently held aloft, suspended in the air. Um, so if you certainly want to do something like that, you certainly can. I'm going to cast uh, Fireball. All right, uh, uh, go ahead and make have... a spell attack. Spell attack roll. Um, with advantage, or... because um, with advantage because he is uh, currently, um, like, held suspended. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast uh, Frostbite oh. on the hand that's holding the staff thing, because make him let go of it. Am I rolling to hit, or am I rolling for the Yeah, attack? this is spell attack. Nine. Nine, unfortunately, does not hit. Um, Damn it. As you uh, cast the fire bolt out at him, um, the fire actually just almost seems to be absorbed into his armor. And he kind of just laughs at you and goes, Fool. And he struggles against his uh, restraints. Mm. Not good enough, Reinar. Um, how far away from cast, me? Hang on, I'm gonna cast... Kill you all! How far is he away from, from us? Um, he's just about, like, 30 feet in front of you all. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. cast Frostbite on the hand that's holding his magical item. Okay, give me a spell attack. With advantage, correct? Yep. Nice, I got a 20. Cool. So, 20. Uh, natural 20? Yep. All right. Nice. Nice. I got a twenty and a nine. So um. <laughs> so go ahead and um. Double the double what you roll on the die. Okay. So he well, no, he has. Fro um. You cause numbing frost to form on one creature that you can see within range. It has to be a con save. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. That that completely takes away that twenty. I am so sorry. <laughs> I no, it, so yeah, no, part of the spell attack is that you make that, a, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood that one. Um, okay, so he makes, he makes a constitution saving throw. Uh, what's your yeah. spell save, DC? Um, 14. Okay. Ooh, yeah, no, he definitely fails that. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, he gets 1d6 cold damage and has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll before the end of its next turn. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll the damage. That would be a four. Four damage. Oh, wait. Four? Do I add anything to that? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I rolled a um, four. Yeah, that's the problem with cantrips. They don't really get too much added to them. But that is all right. Four all right. Can I add, of cold damage. Yeah. And I'm going to add my, I'm gonna add my inspiration. Oh, you're going to add inspiration to the damage. Nice. Go ahead and roll it. That would be a great time to use it. I rolled an eight. An eight. All right. So that four points of damage gets changed to 12 points of cold damage. God damn. So, and as that happens, the golden tethers that were holding him aloft suddenly shatter. And he falls down to the ground, looks up at you all with a burning rage in his eyes, and he just... Yeah. Everybody I roll for initiative. Oh man, I was about to, about to start running up at him, but whatever, okay. <laughs> Sorry! First bit of damage is what would break the shackles. Fair enough. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I got a five. This. You're not oh, gonna fuck believe two. me. I feel like I should take a picture of this. I rolled another nat 20. <laughs> nice. You I roll a two! I roll a two! Oh, oh no. Feel free to add your initiative bonus if you have it. Oh, uh, I guess then it'll be, uh, Yeah, it's your five. dexterity. <laughs> yeah, so oh, five. Oh, okay, uh, Well, no, it's, it's, yeah, you, you have your initiative bonus, which is just basically your dexterity anyway, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, five. Yeah, it's five. It's uh, five. what'd you get, Devovin? Five. Okay. <laughs> Okay, rock, paper, scissors it. <laughs> uh, uh, ginger? Oh, we just attacked together. And a 19. And a 19. All right. So, first up is you, Jin. You get first attack. Sorry, I, like I said, I'm going to roll crappy for the rest of the time. Um, um, but you did just, however, use your action 
for um, when the surprise bonus round, I'm actually going to be utilizing a little bit of the... Uh... No, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't like doing that. No, you, just, you have your full action. Nah, just go ahead. Do what you do. Okay. Um... <laughs> I need to get the comment music up in here. Hold up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for anybody who's wanting to know what I'm listening to, I'll put this in the ambiance. I keep forgetting to do that. I am so sorry for that. I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. Okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. So that'll be a d20 plus your spell attack bonus. Six, so eight, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen misses. So as you fire the blast out at him, he takes up his shield and smashes it out of the air. Oh. But he does get disadvantage. Uh huh. On his, on his next roll. weapon attack, yes. Yeah. Um, alright, is there anything else you want to do? You have your movement and bonus action. Um, bonus action? I don't think I have anything. Oh! I'm gonna... No, I can't do that either. Well... Hmm. Okay, the, um... I'm gonna take the stones that I have in my pocket. Okay. Put them in my hand couple them in both of my hands and say the spell for um, magic stone. Okay. So you charge, uh, so you're gonna charge them up? Yep. Okay. And I'm gonna take steps back. I'm gonna kind of duck behind that building that we're close to there. Okay. The building to the <clears throat> right. So I'm gonna kind of take cover. Okay. I'm, I'm not gonna make individual dots for everybody because we're not gonna be doing the whole battle map every, uh, and such like that. Just everybody try and keep like mental... Yeah theater of where everybody is at. Just doing combat maps at this stage is pretty difficult to do. Um, but we may try in, in the future or something like that, but right now, no. Um, okay, so easy enough, you go ahead and kind of slip behind the corner of the building um, to take a little bit of cover. Um, next up in the initiative order is Ginger. Make a spell attack book against him. Ooh, we had a 19 that time. A 19? That just hits. What? <laughs> it's gonna um, throw some pretty tough armor then. <laughs> yeah, well, it's plate. Half plate. Plus the shield. Can't we just aim for the squishy part? <laughs> uh, so go ahead and um, roll your damage die. So on a 1d10, the 0 is a 10, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, 14. Oh, it's attack bonus. Wait, is it oh, no, attack no, bonus no. Wait, no, you don't add anything to the cantrip. No, it'll, it would just be 10 damage. Okay, so yeah, um, so as you fire the fire bolt at him, um, you watch as like his armor flashes red. And as the fire bolt like, gets close to hitting him, it seems to hit a barrier first and then hit him. So it seems like some of the damage was actually absorbed before actually hitting him. Um, so you, you expected a much bigger impact, but you weren't expecting two smaller ones. Fire resistance. I think he just kind of looks up at you and... <laughs> my and also, sorry, sorry for my dog um, The my dog pend here, Yeah, you notice so that there is... I'm sorry, go ahead. I said sorry for my dog barks here for shoveling the snow outside. Oh, I didn't even hear him. <laughs> um, no, actually, you know. still have a bonus action in movement. Was there anything else you wanted to do, Ginger? Um, I don't think I can make a bonus action attack yet. Since you're not from ranged. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm good. Alright. So. First thing he is going to do is he points the the rod at you, Paul Mac, 
Okay. Uh, let me look up something. Okay. I just need to figure out which one exactly it is. I think it's a wisdom save. Yes, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw as the um, the the um, slug-like creature at the end of his rod suddenly um, emits this bright green light, and your eyes just kind of get lost in this bright light, and you can't help but feel a draw coming from it. Um, so, what's your wisdom saving throw? Uh, my wisdom is plus one. Okay, and so rolling d20 now. I rolled a 10 plus 1 to be 11. That is going to be a fail, my friend. Yeah. So your eyes suddenly burst with this green energy, and you all watch as this crown of twisted black iron seems to manifest itself over Hallmack's head before slamming down on top of his head with a thunderous thunk and he just lifts up, uh, kind of stands up, his eyes flash red and he slowly looks over at Demovin and pulls out his sword. Oh no. You oh, are God, currently charmed by Crown of Madness. Oh, damn it. Okay. And guess whose turn it is? Yours! Oh, no. <laughs> um, also, before that, though, um, you all notice now that there is a pendant that is swinging around Weinar's neck, um, seemingly emblazoned with some sort of imagery on it. This pendant now suddenly flashes, and he disappears in a puff of smoke, and reappears right behind you and you feel his cold clammy right fingers wrap around your um, shoulder and he leans down and says hi oh, he jumps you, behind you, 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 cut out, you, cut out. you Jin oh um, no. can I get attack of opportunity no he teleported oh, no. he appears behind you and now he has his so hand on your shoulder um, Hallmack, I need you to make an attack roll for me, please. Alright. Oh, shit. Uh, 15 plus 5. So, that'll be 20. Demovin, does a 20 hit against your armor class? Yep. I need you to roll damage, Hallmack. I would hope so. Goddamn. I am so sorry. Uh... Oh, shit! Oh, no. Natural 20. Uh, we know yes. that's oh, that, that's wait, no, natural that's 20 on the damage roll? Oh, no, no, that's it. That's it. That's it. No, that's a. He's, <laughs> he's, he's weapon to make weapon, weapon, weapon attack. He's wrong guy. My apologies. Never mind. Forget that. Um, my long sword is a D8. Let me see if I can find my 8. Sorry, I had this prepared. Alright, D8. D8, uh, 4, and plus 2. So I'll be. Uh, plus, six. don't forget your. Your strength modifier. modifier, yeah, make sure you're adding in your damage bonus because you're also a yeah. duelist. So it's yeah. like plus seven, right? Uh, so four, plus two, plus, uh, eleven. Alright, Demovin, will you receive eleven points of slashing damage as, uh, All Max sword suddenly falls across down your chest? Cool. What? Um, Hallmack, you can go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw. Here we go, guys. Oh, fuck. Why did I have to bounce off my arm and then hit the table? Um, <laughs> that's a natty one. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, you are still within the clown's crutches, my friend. Alright, uh, Demovin, it is your turn. I'm going to Eldritch Blast Hallmark. Okay. <laughs> Fuck oh God. Sorry, buddy. You hit me. I'm hitting back. I don't <laughs> care if it's crown of madness. <laughs> this is gonna be great to address later. <laughs> no I literally, <laughs> as I literally have something crown my, around my eyes, and I cannot even see or know exactly what the hell's happening around me. Uh, go ahead. Twenty-seven hit. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that hits. Hallmack, what's your air armor class? Uh, plus my shield, which I do currently have, is a uh, 18. Yeah, that hits. 
Uh, that's ten force damage. All right, Hallback, make another uh, wisdom saving throw, back, please. And he's not back ten feet. Oh, good to know. So you are pushed back this ten feet. We really need hold person. Damn it! I'm rolling this. This guy is been is gonna be going to timeout after this. I rolled a four on my wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> God. Okay, well, we are back up at the top of the initiative order. Jin. He, is he still behind me? Oh, yeah. Okay, instinctively, I'm gonna grab Auntie Ruby's dagger and try to get him in the side. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Do I add anything? Uh, be your dexterity plus proficiency. Uh, 18. Oh, I rolled a, I rolled an 18. Dex an 18 on zero. the And proficiency bonus? Yeah, it's plus two, so you rolled a 20. Which is just enough. Is uh, yeah, you, you do hit. I do so. thank Peyton, who gifted me these dice. Thank you very much. And I swear to you, I am, these are my true roles. I swear on I know, the life of I know. my children, these are my true roles. I I trust all of you. That's why I don't, like, do force I know how rolling you feel. or use, like, a dice program or anything on here. Like, I trust you. Um, what's the uh, d saving DC for the dagger again? Uh, 13. Okay. Ooh. Didn't know what happened. Yeah, he I, I was, is out of the last session, I sucked all the bad luck out. Uh, go ahead and roll the damage as well. Uh, 1d4. And it would be normally your dex, but you already said it's a plus zero, so it's just going to be 1d4 flat. Yeah, it's just a one. Okay, one point of piercing damage, plus he is now poisoned. Oh. Alright. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Lucky shot. I'll get you for that one, sorcerer. Um, next up, Ginger. Uh, and he's, his breath smells like garlic. Oh yeah, <laughs> garlic and fish and onions. That's what this. Whoa. That's what this. Uh, co that's what this community makes, by the way. Nobody asked what their crops were. It's garlic and onions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you farm a fish? Jin is now. <laughs> Is he, he feels like he's been poisoned. <laughs> yeah, I need Jin to make a constitution saving throw from that funky-ass breath. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, Ginger, it is your turn. Um, he is still currently, like, standing between, like, you and Jin. Like, Jin whipped around and stabbed him, but, like, he's still right there with him. Okay, uh... I want to try to sneak attack with a dagger, and then swipe with my claws. Okay, go ahead and give me attack rolls for both. On the bright side, they've never been overrun oh. by vampires. <laughs> that should be a fun fact for this little shanty town. Shanty town number one fun fact of the day. They've never been ever run by vampires. <laughs> fun fact number two. They're garlic farmers. <laughs> well, I rolled a three on the dagger, but an 18 in the claws. Okay, the three is going to miss. And is it an 18 total, or is that just on the die? Uh, that's just on the die. I don't know what I add to that. For your, um, well, because you're a rogue, um, that, like, your stuff is considered, um, like, fists are also finesse so it can be either strength or dexterity so your claws are finesse so you can use dexterity so whatever 18 plus 6 is oh yeah so yeah that definitely hits so so what you kind of do is like you rush up on him and do like this fainting maneuver where you swing in with a dagger and he blocks low with the shield but you swing in with your uh paw because he doesn't know that you're like you're a clawed creator or Claude Creator. <laughs> um, so while you, you distract him with the uh, the left um, the, the the dagger swipe, you come in with the claws um, and actually find purchase on a spot where his half plate does not cover, which is like on his uh, directly below, like his um, uh, his armpit. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and roll damage on the claw. Uh, three. All right, three points of slashing damage. He is doing fine. 
Um, actually, as you hit him with this, you notice that, like, this ma uh, magical sheen that seemed to have been covering him suddenly bursts. And when you actually claw in, you actually scratch his flesh and draw blood. Whereas, like, now you're noticing that everything that had hit him before had either, like, hit his armor or if it had hit him and it left no type of scratch at all. But now you're actually starting to find purchase. So... Yeah. Alright, it is his turn, and he goes... Ah. Uh, he looks over at Hall Mac and gets a moment look of regret, but then he looks at you two and goes... Choice. And he, um... Uh throws out uh, his arms at both sides and uh, bursts with a magical energy. Call back the uh, crown fades away from the top of your head, but you all watch as three more Rhinars step out from him and then start doing this weird dance and maneuver where they just start swinging and, and uh, swaying and bobbing and weaving all around him as he casts Mirror Image on himself. Catch me if you can, fools! Um, he okay. is going to use his bonus action and uh, thrust something into your face, Jin. Okay. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Two. Two? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So, uh, um, you're not really sure what he hits you with. All you know is that you feel this liquid splash across your face, and it begins to burn like all fucking godly on hell. Um, oh, you no. watch Ginger as, uh... Reinar uncorks a vial of acid and throws it into Jin's face. Uh, not the God face! Damn. <laughs> uh, Jin, you receive nine points of acid damage. God damn. And no. all you can hear through the searing, burning pain is his high, shrill laughter. <laughs> How's that taste? <laughs> Before his lips melt off, he screams, FUCKER! <laughs> <laughs> Fucker, I barely know it. Sorry. You look the face. <laughs> okay. Um, alright, next up is both at the same time, uh, Hallmack and Demovin. Okay. I, uh, I completely shake up head and I, uh, do I, did I have any recollection of what I just did to Demovin? Oh yeah, you uh, know everything. I'm like, I am so sorry, and I literally yeah, just- Yeah, what's done is done! And I literally just charge at uh, Reinar uh, and make an attack with my longsword. Okay. Alright. Go ahead and make uh, an attack roll. Attack roll is uh, 10, and I add my. I don't have anything to the attack roll, right? Uh, yes, here it will be. Um, you should have an attack bonus there next to your sword. Uh, attack bonus? Oh, 7. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so 17. 17 unfortunately misses. So as your sword comes down, he repels it with his shield. Oh, well, then I action I use action action surge to uh to another swing. Ace, let's go. <laughs> also, uh, just a quick reminder because uh you're still very fresh and new to D&D &D, and also this is a brand new mechanic that is exclusive to me. I'm just going to re gently remind you about your dun uh, DM inspiration die. Uh, I I have it right there, sitting right there, and I'm looking at like. Uh, <laughs> uh, but go ahead and make your second attack roll. Second attack is 18 plus 7. Definitely so. hits. So as your sword comes down, and you're sure you know that you hit him this time, your sword passes through one of his illusionary um, duplicates, oh. and the duplicate fades away. He has two more. But as it fades away, it sticks its tongue at you and goes. <laughs> oh 
Oh, I can't wait till I get smacked in the face with my shield. <laughs> He's one of those boss fights. Um, it is, uh, so, Demovin, your turn. Um, so, you said that these mirror images are how close to him? Oh, they're, like, in like... the same space as him. It, you cannot differentiate them between them and him. Interesting enough. I'm gonna I'm flap to the space next to him and, uh, hit him with the old thunderclap. <laughs> thunderclap! Baby he's gotta make a he, he he he's gotta make a DC fifteen. Okay. Um, dexterity. Uh, or, constitution. Oh, constitution. Okay. Oh, nat twenty on the die. Unfortunate. Um, is it is it just like he has to Nine. fail in a deal's damage, or does it do half he damage? He has to fail. No, there's no half damage. Uh, unfortunate. <laughs> Identify the correct one by its terrible garlic breath. Unfortunately, Robofish, it's so bad it kind of permeates the entire area like an aura. <laughs> it's an AoE. Yeah, it's an AoE. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you do still have your bonus action and a little bit of movement left, and you do as well, Hallmack. Um, and okay. a quick reminder, drinking uh, healing potions is a bonus action. Well, I use my action surge, and that's a bonus action, so I can't use uh, that. It shouldn't be. Uh, action surge is just a. a I'm gonna drink my potion. It isn't. Let me let me oh, check. Let me check. The... I'm pretty sure it's just an an effect that you can just say I'm using this and it just takes effect. I don't think there's an action involved with it. Well, action is a, well action surge is one use, and that's why I'm seeing it in the fighter uh, book. Action Surge is just an ability that you get to refresh Actually, you every get, uh, short rest. You get um, an additional action and an additional bonus action, too. Oh. Weird. Okay. Um, so that's, that's probably just... where you misread it, because it does mention bonus action. Maybe you read that and thought, oh, I have to use my bonus action to use it. Maybe that's what you thought. Um, Maybe. But yeah, you can't use it again until um, you take a short rest. But that's fine. Um, so, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I guess I will uh, drink uh, the health potion I have in my uh, back in my backpack. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, two d four and add two to the total, and that's what you're gonna heal back. Speaking of which, I got seven back from mine. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I rolled uh, a three, four, five. I think it is. You said add two. Yeah. I uh, got five HP back. I'm not back yet. Uh, did you roll two D4s? Did you roll the D4 oh, twice? Okay. Yeah, I did. I just rolled two of them, but side by side. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I got uh, one and two. All right, we are back up at the top of the initiative order. Jin, it is your turn. I'm going to phase my phase and then drink the rest of the health potion. <laughs> okay. Can I? Uh, that's bonus action. Yeah, yeah, two D4 plus two. Oh, two D4. Grab the other one. Four. Four? Okay. Yeah, so it's 2d4 plus two? Yes. So, six. So I have eight. You and feel some of the flesh reconstitute back onto your face, and your eyes don't singe and burn to the point where you can hardly even see anymore. And he's still right in front of me, right? Oh, yeah. But now there's like three of them. Two, actually. Two. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, three total. Because he created yeah. three duplicates, so there's like four. But like, yeah. yeah. So Jin like opens his eyes and suddenly there's like three of them standing. Can I, is there a way for me to move where they are both in the same line within five feet? I mean, the same. They're occupying like the I same space. Line. It's it. You can't hit all of them at the same time. But I should be able to move to where they're lined up right in front of me. Yeah, but that's well, just, that's not how this spell works. <laughs> no, I'm saying I move so that I can get them both in a straight nope. line. I don't think that works that way. No, what I am Don't saying go. is they are all occupying the exact same space, Jin. There is no way for you to line them up because they're all in the same spot. Basically, the way mirror image works is that you have to hit the mirror images before you can hit them unless you use specific kinds of spells. Oh, uh, I know what I'm gonna do. Just as an interest to. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, cool. Okay. They are within five feet of me, correct? Yeah. Okay. I am going to. Uh, cast Green Flame Blade. 
Can I cast mm-hmm. Guidance with that? Uh, uh, no, Guidance wouldn't help with that. Guidance is more for skill checks. That's my thought. Alright. Okay, and I'm going to use Ruby's Dagger, or the, the Green Dragon Dagger, which is a melee attack weapon against one creature within range. Otherwise, the spell sells. When I hit the target, suffers the attack's normal effects and green flames leap from one target to a different creature of your choice that you can see within five feet. Okay. The second creature takes fire damage equal to your spellcasting ability modifier. It's a good idea. Uh, go ahead and make your attack roll. Thirteen. Unfortunately, that uh, is going to wait. Hold on. No, that actually hits. Um, one of his illusionary duplicates. So, you slash away at one of the duplicates, and it fades away. And your green flame pops off of the illusionary duplicate and lands on Reinar. Go ahead and roll the damage. Oh, wait, does he need to make a saving throw or anything? Um, I don't think so. Uh, it's been a while since I've used this, I don't remember. On a hit, the target suffers the attack's normal effects. It just says... Oh, it's probably just a prerequisite to see how to hit it beforehand. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and roll the damage for the green fire that jumped to Reinar. Okay, I don't it, I don't even know what I'm supposed to roll. Spell's damage increases no. Uh, on a hit, the target suffers the attack's normal effect. So I, I don't know what I'm supposed to roll. Uh, fire damage equal to your spell casting ability modifier. Okay, oh, so oh, oh. Um, what's your charisma modifier? Five, right? Plus five? Six. It's six. There's no way that you can be plus six. No, just oh, your, you just your charisma. Oh, four. Your charisma's plus but four. I okay. have a spell, I have a plus six to spell attack bonus. Yeah, but it's not that. It's your spell casting ability modifier. So oh, it's, oh, it's oh, just oh, your, it's your charisma okay. bonus. So four yeah, damage. Four. So four points of fire damage to him. I'm so, I thought that's true. Uh, Ginger, your turn. Unless you want to try and move away, Jin. He'll get an opportunity attack if I do, won't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nope. I'll stay here. So did the green flame blade do normal damage? Fire damage. No. It hit one of the illusionary duplicates and caused it to fade away. But then like the green flame fire splashed over to him and got Oh wait, yeah, that's right. Fire resistance. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what one of Yeah, yeah. So, so as the green flames like got on him, some of them landed on like that illusionary ba- or that like barrier still- that you saw before. Do I still have a bonus action? Uh, no, because he used it to drink a potion. He's gonna try to grab his necklace. No. <laughs> and that's an action. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna try to do the dagger and claws again. Okay, go ahead and make attack rolls. <laughs> so, uh, 13 on the dagger and a nat 20 on the claws. God damn. Yeah, well, again, the dagger world, doesn't work. He, we- he falls for your fainting trick again. <laughs> the dagger misses as he like he uses his shield to repel it, but your claw finds purchase again. Um, go ahead and roll the uh, the damage die, and then whatever you roll in the die, multiply by two for being a critical. Uh, four. Uh, four total. Did you add your dexterity into that too? I thought you didn't add dexterity for the damage. Oh wait, no, yeah, it's offhand. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Okay. It is now Reinar's turn. Um, his pendant is going to flash again, and he's going to away back over here a bit away from uh, being so scrunched in with the party. Does and he, he raises his pe- uh, his uh, rod up at you, Jin. 
and casts Eldritch Blast. Oh, um, shit. what's your armor class? Oh, uh, 13 because of the mage armor. Maybe hell, Mac. It's not an attack of opportunity because it's a teleport. They they don't ah. move past you. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So when he did that, he like disappeared in a puff of misty smoke, and just reappeared like 30 feet away and just. A... No wonder he said you really weren't gonna like him. I already hate him already. <laughs> now that he makes me more uh, 16 to hit. That does hit. So, Jin, you take... 9 points of force damage, and then he is actually going to activate his Pact Boon on you. Um, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. I can't. What do you mean? He's down. Oh, you're unconscious. Oh, so oh, that, this no. effect is going to happen regardless. Um, Jin, I need you to mark off two spell slots. I only have one left, so... Okay. Um, he can only take one, so that he will take what he can get, and he gets one spell slot back. But you lose that spell slot as he absorbs the magic from your body. And, um, yeah, so you all watch as Jin just falls down to the ground. Um, he, uh, Lord Reinar begins to cackle loudly, and he raises, um, his left hand in, like, a clawed like fashion towards Jin. And when he does, you all watch as this greenish orb of energy just emerges from Jin's chest and flies into his hand, and he just coalesces it, like, absorbs it into his being. Yes. And now he turns his attention back at you, Hallmack. Um, okay. Uh, Demo yeah. Ben, your turn. No, I'm gonna, since me and Hallmack rolled the same, go ahead and attack him first, Hallmack. Alright, go ahead. I... With a fire in my eyes, I charge at him again. Not, it's not using a dash action. I'm, I just charge at him and take a swing of my sword. Okay, make an attack roll. Okay, come on, dice. Oh, fuck. Uh. Oh, fuck. Eleven. <laughs> eleven. Uh, eleven total is 11 going total. to unfortunately miss. Alright, then I'm gonna use my uh, inspiration uh, die. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, go ahead and roll that, and we'll add it into the 11. Uh, it'll be a 14, I lo it looks like. Uh, no, that 14 would be a 14 total? No, it's a, no, it's a, it's a uh, 11 plus 2, so 11. A 13 total? Um, that actually is going to be enough to hit one of his illusionary duplicates. The last oh, one that he has... I didn't so know. Yeah, no, that sure. will actually cause that spell to uh, fade away, and it just kind of yep. goes. Ah, damn it! No matter, hey. you're mine. I'm going to cast Sanctuary on Hallmack and fly out of his spell range. Oh! <laughs> All right, Hallmack, you feel um, this energy coalesce around you. This protective energy coalesce around you and you watch as like this um silvery like energy like bubble envelops around you the the um rot lord reinar like his eyes goes wide and he looks over at you uh demovin as you fly away he goes ah, curse you owl i'm i i i put it i i slightly have a bit of relief to myself but I'm just, but as you know that's just a few seconds that we ha had i feel a sense of relief to turn my oh it's a full minute you, as long as you don't attack on your turn <laughs> you can just walk around and he can't do much just help the others um i guess without movement um i i will i will break off and try to go uh get Jin up off his on, off his feet uh um, you already yeah. used your your turn um, oh, yeah. going in and attacking beforehand. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is just for, like, next turn. Yeah. And mostly to prevent him from hitting you with the crown again. Yep. So the thing that I'm mind controlled is always... I always need to hit my chest. Nice. Good move, by the way.
Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. That will affect Crown of Madness. Um, I was just checking because Crown of Madness doesn't necessarily do damage, but it doesn't necessarily mean like a damaging type of target spell. It just says a harmful spell. And this is definitely a harmful spell. <laughs> so um, that definitely works against Crown of Madness. Uh, um, all right, and your flying speed is 30, right? Yep. So you're 30 feet away. Okay. Um, all right, next up in the initiative order, Jin, I need you to make a death saving throw for me, please. Fifteen. Fifteen, that is a success. You can go ahead and mark one success on there. Do I add anything to that? Button? Nope, it's just a straight d20 roll. Um, if you roll uh, anything below a 10, you fail. Anything above oh. a 10, you succeed. Okay. Actually, I think it's 10 or below is a failure. Yeah, you have to get above a 10. Yeah, that's what it is. You have to get above a 10. So 10 or below is a fail. 11 to 20 is a success. Um, okay. All right, so that's your turn. You're still <laughs> unconscious. You kind of cough up a little blood. Uh, Ginger, it is your turn. How is he looking? Um, in terms of being dead, he's halfway there. Oh, baby, got a prayer. You should maybe use action to feed him potion. Yeah, it is an action to feed or administer a potion to uh, somebody else. Bonus action consume. Action to feed. Jin is down because I... of all the 20s he got earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as I I would do the potion, uh, Ginger's gonna... Yeah, you know, for the heck of it, I'm gonna have him take over. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, Halmac, you would probably be the only one close enough to really experience this. You, the air around you, like it's 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 a midsummer day. The the sign the the sky above you is directly beaming sunlight directly down on you, and you've been in the heat of battle. Like things have been heated, you know. You, you're hot and you're sweaty and such like that. But all of a sudden, the air temperature around you begins to drop. You feel this chill rise in the air, almost like coming from behind you. As you kind of turn a little bit, almost cautiously because you do still have an enemy in front of you, you kind of glance over your shoulder and you notice that Ginger seems to be having some sort of a fit. He's hunched over, his face is contorted in what looks like an expression of rage. And his breath starts to actually become visible. And it begins to increase. <sighs> Ginger suddenly roars and explodes and his throat actually bursts open as this uh, bluish pale blood oh. sprays out onto the ground around him. Um, blood actually begins to pour out of his, uh, what is his nose, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, his eye, his other eye, um, uh, begins to actually pour out um, as you notice that this, his entire expression and demeanor just completely changes. His hair kind of stands up on end, and his eyes went from the two colors that you've seen before to just this pale, ghastly blue. And you notice this palish blue blood just pouring down his neck as just every muscle in his body just begins to flex as Ginger enters into a rage. <laughs> and what would you like to do next? Uh, I want to try to do two unarmed strikes. All right, Malice, go ahead and make your unarmed strikes. Malice? Uh, five and a 15. 
Um, those unfortunately will both miss. As you suddenly like rush forward and assault him with a couple of blows, he kind of is taken back a bit at like your sudden strength and like quickness and like boldness of moving in. Um, he lifts up his shield and blocks off both blows as he looks up at you with a sudden surprise, but then he grins. Oh no. As it's now his turn. And he raises his rod at you, Malice. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw now as he casts Crown of Madness on you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, golly, I kind of forgot about that part. <laughs> Twelve. You could have just healed the elf. Twelve, unfortunately, is a failure as the crown manifests itself over your head and crashes down onto your noggin. It's one of the last things that you kind of see being in control. As you begin to growl lowly and turn to Hallmack. And I'm one of those players where I uh, think about my, I think about what my character would do, and you know, Junior's kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like as much as I want to heal Jin, I know Ginger would. No, you no, do you? <laughs> we all love a we all love a bit of role play. <laughs> yeah, I'm very role play heavy. Um, that's when he kind of looks at you, Hallmack, and kind of gets like a little bit of a panic look in his eye, like, kind of clutches at the pendant a little bit and kind of goes, fuck. He actually turns and runs away. Um, he actually exposes himself for a moment. If you would like to, you can make an attack of opportunity against him. I shall. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. 19! <laughs> 19, oh. nice. Go ahead and nice, roll you're out damage. Of the all right, um, roll damage. I'll be at the eight. I think that's the right dice. It is. Okay, D8. Ooh, boy. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> 13 points of damage. Jeez! God wow! Damn. Yeah, with that, like, he slashed down his back. Like, as soon as he turns tail, like, he decides, but I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to go. And he turns tail to run. And, and he can't see the attack coming. So you slash, like, down his back. And he squeals out in pain, just... And he still just keeps on running, but he looks really roughed up. That was a really rough hit, and he is more than bloody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, mind. And with bitch. that, it is Hallmax and Demovin's turn. I'm fin- Alright. I'm like, oh, you know- No, you don't, you son of a bitch. Yeah, he gets gonna... away a little ways away from you, and then he, like, turns around to prepare to defend himself again. Uh, I- I move up to- I move up front, meet him up face to face, and I make my attack roll. Okay, make the attack. 16 plus, uh, would be my, uh, attack bonus, which would be 7. So, yeah. How much is that in uh, total? 16 plus 7 is... 23. If I need, okay. If I need right. Um, he, as you, uh, come down with this blow, like, you sure fire know that this is going to hit, he, um... His eyes suddenly flash, and he reveals himself to be a shieldborn, as a bubble suddenly erupts around him, and your sword almost has enough strength to break through it, but just barely is thwarted. His armor class is 24 now, until uh, oh, his no. next turn. So close, buddy. So fucking close. I was like, oh shit, is he not gonna be able to use his shield? <laughs> yep, his magic um, initiate is shield. He is a shield born. I didn't even know that what that even means or how that even existed. Oh well. So it's um <laughs> it's a spell that's uh for wizards where they can cast a bubble around them and increase their armor class by five until the start of their next turn. Basically, everybody just sees, like, a immediate flash of light as I literally 
the, have a very strong arm attack, and as they literally just clashes. Yep. Yeah, just sparks go flying on, on that one. Like, it, it was so close to breaking the bubble. So close. Yeah, now I wish I had my action first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, um, you still have your bonus action and a little bit of movement. Actually, no, it would take you full 30 feet to get to where he is now. So, you still have your bonus action, um, but I don't think there's um, anything you can do with that. Uh, um, no, I can't. I don't think I have anything. So, that... we are going to go ahead and pop over to Demovin. Demovin, it is your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to activate the ability on my rod to get my spell slot back for the day, and then okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on Jin. Nice, nice. Uh, go ahead and roll that hit points for Jin, please. The nine for healing. Nice. Jin, you are oh. back up with nine hit points. You are still prone on the ground. It'll take half your movement in order yeah. to stand up, but you're a sorcerer who even uses movement. It's a crutch. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but you are back up and you are okay. Thank oh. you, thank you, thank you. Why does it taste like chicken? <laughs> it's the garlic and onion after effect. <laughs> um... All right, so Demovin, that was your bonus action, actually. Oh, wait, is it an action to activate the rod? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, but you do still have your movement. You are currently, like, I'd say 60 feet away from where Lord Reinar is, 30 feet away from where Jin and them are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move closer to Jin and Ginger, just kind of make sure that crown isn't gonna too much. Okay. <laughs> just it doesn't kill Jin again. Yeah. <laughs> so Use yeah, you see Ginger like spot. with his like, hair seriously. like standing on end, but and right now he's kind of like going back and forth between um, Hallmack and Jin, but he seems to be a little bit more focused on Hallmack than Jin is, or than he is on Jin. Um, but we are gonna go ahead and with that back up at the top of the initiative order, Jin, it is your turn. I really wish I had Mage Hand. Okay. <laughs> so he's still the red dog, right? Yeah. Does he, he move? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use my sorcery points and get a spell slot back. Okay. Hmm. Let me see. Is that, is that an action to do, or is that just a thing you do? Let me see. How far is he from me? 30 feet? Uh, currently 30 feet away, yes. Let and there's nobody up. between me and him? Uh, currently, Hallmack and Ginger. Ginger has the crown on. Bonus action. Yes, right. Ginger has the crown on, yes. Um, actually, on Ginger, instead of, yeah, instead of doing that on Ginger, can I cast, would anything I cast on him override the crown? Yeah, that's what I'm asking, like, have none of our hits been making him, like, lose concentration at all? No, I mean hits to Ginger. Actually, hold on. He's got a point there because uh, Hallmack... Wait, no. Hallmack didn't... Yeah, he did. He did land a hit on him when he ran away. So, yeah, you were right on that. So, let me... Let me make a point save for him. Um, he does actually succeed on that. Yeah, he's excited on that. But, yeah, thank you for actually pointing that out, Demovin. You were, you were right on that, that he needed to do a concentration check on that. But that was the only damage that he took from after he casted that on Ginger. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then also, Holmec, your, um, your I... bubble went away, too. If... Oh, yeah, I am aware of that. I'm like, oh, well, he... it doesn't matter if I was be able to be attacked or not. I'm going to try to kill the guy. He would got any catnip left. <laughs> like, yes. I... He does, though. It's in his pack. He does. It's just kind of hard to get to it. Oh, this actually catnip. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like throwing a stick at a tiger. Like, not me, this! <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jin, uh, what do you want to do with your action? 
If I cast something on Ginger, would the crown override it? Um, I would say you don't really know. I, mean, I don't think Crown of Madness can even be broken from somebody. Yes, There's ways can. to break it, yeah. There's ways. Being damaged, you have to roll Constitution. Uh, Jin, give me an Arcana check. Sorry, Demovin, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Six. Yeah, you have no idea. Alright, like well, I am going to cast um, Cause Fear on Malice. Uh, Malice, you are raging, right? Yep. Okay, let me see something. Um... So, uh, it, does that, uh, fear thing, is that, um, a will save, or...? Yeah. No, um... Uh, yeah, wisdom. Wisdom saving throw. And my spell save is 14. Okay, uh, go ahead and make that saving throw for me, please, Ginger, because you can actually be feared, even if you are raging. Uh, six. So you are a feared. Oh, God. <laughs> so you, Ginger, uh, or Malice, I should say, um, suddenly in your mind's eye, you're back on Earth, and you're surrounded by the facility. And you have an opening to the west, or to, to, uh, to, the, to the east, I mean. Wait. Yeah, no, west, I was right. So, Ginger, this is, I'm using this marker for you. You start ticking tail and running off in this direction. Um, and that's actually your turn, Ginger. <laughs> um, but at the end of your yeah. turn, go ahead and make me another wisdom saving throw. Twelve. Uh, nope. It's still not good enough. You are still fired. Um, for as long as Jin is holding this spell. Um, we are back up to Reinar's turn. His bubble fades away. And he starts looking pretty, um, fucking nervous. Um, so, in a shock of desperation, no, that's not really gonna work, um, <laughs> yeah, he's just gonna Eldritch Blast with oh, disadvantage no. because it's melee range, and yeah, the disadvantage actually ended up saving you, Halmak. Um, he raises his rod to blast an Eldritch Blast at you, but you're able to hit the, um, the rod with your shield and cause the blast to just kind of go wide. Basically, just basically smack his, his shield as he's about to basically blast me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, he raises the rod up in your face and, and it begins to charge up to blast, but it gives you that chance to just kind of deflect it with the shield. Um... And that's pretty much going to be his turn, and probably also his life, as uh, Demovin and Halmak, your turn. <laughs> Hang on, he just tried to cast Elder's Blast on you. I gave you first, uh, both last turn. Can I can I try something here real quick? By all means, go right ahead. I'm going to fly up to him, and I'm going to point my rod at him, and I'm going to be like, why don't you try mine, and then I'm going to cast Elder's Blast to him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, go ahead and make the attack roll. I know I am, but what are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a 21 to hit. A 21 nice. to hit. Hell yeah. That definitely hits because his uh, his shield is dissipated. Um, so go ahead and uh, make the attack or roll the damage. Uh, it's uh, seven damage and he's knocked 10 feet back. Um, well, he's not necessarily knocked 10 feet back. He's it's... knocked dead. Uh, Demovin, how would you like well, to do this? Oh, he's still gonna yes. be knocked back. He's standing Let's next go. to that wall, right? <laughs> he's dead, right? He and he's gonna be knocked dead. back. He is dead. He's gonna be knocked back because I have repelling blast. So I'm just gonna send him through the wall of that house. 
So, as the Eldritch Blast crashes into uh, Lord, quote unquote, Reinar's, Lord Reinar's chest, he is thrown back and uh, cascades head over heel through the dirt, just boom, 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 crashes into the wall of the shack behind you all and lands on the inside. Um, you all look in as, as like this whole wall just kind of caves in a bit. You all notice that there's like two people, two elderly people inside just kind of eating a soup that just kind of stop and look over slowly at the commotion and seeing uh, Lord Reinar come crashing through. <laughs> uh, Devin's going to poke his head in through the hole in the wall and be like, you are free now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as that happens, Demovin, you watch as... Um, Reinar with like kind of leans up a little bit, coughs up a, a couple things of blood, just kind of glares at you all. Damn it. Axrock, I fulfill my end of the bargain. Good. And you watch mm. as this chetinous shell almost begins to grow and bubble off of his skin. Um, hold on a second. Let me pull up the proper ambience here. Can I can I roll a dex save to grab watch. his staff before it? Before it <laughs> um, unfortunately, <laughs> no, because as you go to reach him, this invisible field seems to like prevent you from being able to actually touch him um this black chitinous flesh just begins to bubble and boil all around him like everything that he had on him um like just gets enveloped in this black chitinous looking Damn. ichor um it really actually grows and coalesces and hardens into this blackened spherical or not spherical, but cylinder-like shape, almost like a cocoon that just sits on the um, in the, on the ground in this shack. The ground underneath it, by the way, um, the shack like flooring cracks underneath the weight of the shell, and it kind of crashes down to the dirt floor below. Wow. Mm. Do we know what that black stuff is? Make a uh, arcana or... check or a nature check. Arcana. Woo! 22. Yeah, four. I know Net nothing. 20. What'd you get, Jen? I got a four. Yeah, you know, I know nothing. nothing. Uh, Demovin, you've heard tale of, like, certain things like this before. Um, you think maybe it could be giant centipede egg or something along those lines you don't you know it's definitely insectile we should kill it Can get rid of that thing get rid of that thing while it's still an egg that makes too much garlic does to people um <laughs> everybody <laughs> uh <laughs> malice by the way um you feel your clutch on this world slowly beginning to fade as uh, Ginger starts to poke forward again. So, this next few fleeting moments of control that you have, what do you do with it? Yeah, I dropped the concentration on the fear spell, so... You're no longer feared, I would... Yeah, the crown is gone. The crown is gone, yeah. Yeah, but I feared him, so that would be gone as well. Yeah. Trying to think. Oh, the two elderly people, by the way, run. Like yeah, as soon as like the the <laughs> shit like the thing started bubbling, they were they were gone the fuck out of there. Uh, I, I come in. I literally try to slash my slash my sword with it. Uh, the I guess that's what I heard what Demovin said. As I literally come in, I just literally put grab my sword, uh, put it into a uh, a downward uh, stab fashion, and just uh, stick it right through it. If I can, if I can. Okay. Um, when you do, it goes in, like, relatively easy enough. It slides through the top part, like, the shell, the top part of the shell seems very brittle. And you kind of, like, 
you know, move a sword side to side and slash up a bit, and the shell itself starts breaking apart like it's very brittle and caves in. It is already the inside of it is completely hollow. And what you see on the ground, because where this is is now dirt, you see what appears to be thousands of little tiny tunnels that are now just spread out under the ground. Oh, that ain't good. Mm. Anybody got some pesticide? Demovin, I need you to make a history check. With advantage. Ooh, a 19? There's something that he said. It's hitting you like a ton of bricks now that, like, the adrenaline of the battle is kind of fallen. You start feeling this out of body like experience where you're like, did I actually just hear what I heard? Surely not. The name he said. Asherok. Mm -hmm. You know this name. You don't know why you know this name, but it's echoing inside your head. If you could get goosebumps, you would have them. The chill is just runs down your spine at just the mere thought of that name. It's... It's... scaring you. That's not an easy thing to do these days. This is about... Back, I... whatever echo of a memory that this fear, this reaction is coming from, was f your, from your before life. When you actually were alive. But other than the I feelings that there. you get, other than the feelings that you get, you don't know much. What's the reaction on Demovin's face? And he's just blank. He seems to kind of be staring down at the tunnels. Maybe you think he's kind of been thought, but he's just kind of blank. It's hard to read them of him. I was wondering if, like, I would, if I if I could see, I would be like, it looks like he's seen a ghost, but no. You can roll insight. I'll yeah, let you uh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. I'm I'm proficient in that actually. Uh, where did the D20 go? Oh, whatever. Um. Uh, well, it, it probably wouldn't matter much anyway. Um, I. I rolled a nine total. Yeah, no, you can tell that he's definitely processing some things. You look like you've seen yeah, Jin is okay. is questioning his entire existence at this point. <laughs> and what's Jin? What, what's Malice doing? Not existing anymore because Ginger took over again. Not yet. Yeah. I thought that's what you uh, said. No. He still has I, a he few he a fleeting moments of control left. Oh. <laughs> I just basically look at the uh, demo and say, "Are you okay?" <laughs> Jin or Malice is gonna take the teddy bear out of the bag of holding, put it in uh, Ginger's coat, zips it up, and hugs himself. So <laughs> what? B before he gives control back over to Ginger. Aww. All right, Ginger, you come to back. You come to your throat slowly seals back up again um, but you feel that familiar feeling of like exhaustion just your body being sore because it's subjected to an energy it's not necessarily used to but you look over like almost like expectedly like, you're almost expecting there to be, like, you know, a big, huge thing. Like, oh, we, we beat the, the big bad guy, and here's all the stuff, and, and oh, yeah, great, you know, woohoo, and all that. But there's none of that. Um, you see Demovin kind of just, like, staring down at what appears to be a, a hole or something. Some sort of black shell-like thing. 
uh, Hall Max seems to be talking to him about something, and Jin seems to be having an existential crisis of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I left rubies for this! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ginger's gonna kind of walk over, but he's staying off to the side and looks unusually solemn. I draw back my, I put my sword in my scabbard after I basically take a cloth and just uh, wipe it off because, you know, blood gets everywhere and <laughs> put it back in my scabbard. Um, okay. Demovin's gonna kind of shake himself out of whatever trance he was in and uh, go back to looking outside. He does have to find the big house with all the shiny things in it after all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, then I, I look at Ginger and I'm like, what was that? Ooh. You did not seem mm. like yourself. What was that? <laughs> he, he does not make eye contact. And just kind of just... Hmm. Oh, and he is kind of has one of his paws on the teddy bear, and like has a very almost like a distant look in his eyes. Are there any townspeople around? Uh, yeah, there's. Oh some yeah, you should evacuate them. Uh, there's. You should uh, evacuate why? them. Why? They're dead. He's dead now. Uh, the the holes in the ground and yeah, the, the whole thing things. about giant centipede. Oh, this town is not safe anymore. Once those things mature, it's over. It's just gonna eat everything. You gotta let them know. We only know, only you know that. <laughs> um, I will say I, that's that me telling you. The, oh, you uh, gotta let them know. There's gonna be some giant centipedes here. They're gonna be a real big problem. The elderly couple, um, that this house, the uh, that the uh, uh, Reinar's body went was sent th crashing through. Um, they do kind of come, uh, eventually come over and just kind of, the, uh, the man kind of approaches you all and says, Bless you, adventurers. Thank you for taking care of that scumbag. But Unfortunately, his plight on your town is not yet over. You guys have got to leave. He has let some very devastating things into the earth here. He kind of chuckles a little bit and says, well, unluckily, we don't really have many places that we can go, but maybe we'll be able to relocate if we, you know, use what we were able to gather for this despicable scumbag. We have some supplies in store. We may be able to relocate to a, our other home. Uh, we usually go to whenever this land stops producing. We have another place, but it's usually a really harsh track. We usually one we have to prepare for before we can make, but with what we have, we, we should be able to make it, especially since we've got now a couple less mouths to feed, unfortunately, as he looks solemnly over at the two corpses that lay in the uh, middle of the town square, quote-unquote town square. In the puddles? <laughs> the puddles. Yeah, two little puddles. <laughs> I unclip my helmet and literally put it against my chest, as, and I put, I not put my head down in, I guess, so, solemn sorrow, I guess, and regret for not doing enough. Mm, they can rest easy knowing that their town is free from the evil that once plagued it. This is true. Oh, no. This is very true. You are wise, as they usually say, for your kind. It's good, sir, I will. Put my helmet back on. But, like I was saying, uh, we'll be able to relocate, but how long we'll be able to stay away from this land is hard telling, as we don't ever, we don't really have another place to find. Or um, means of did, it, so. did my check earlier let me know, like, how long these things usually take to mature? You couldn't tell for sure exactly. Like, you know it was like a giant centipede, but it was different like giant centipedes usually lay like clusters of eggs whereas this was just like a giant one um but you think it maybe it's just because of the weird circumstances of it you know coming into existence or stuff like that but i will say one thing that strikes you as extraordinarily odd is that when giant centipedes hatch they don't burrow they kind of just 
find food, but they don't burrow. They're, they're not uh, strong enough to burrow when they are first can I hatched. Can I roll another arcana check? Sure. <laughs> what if we were to I think I boiling... know what I'm dealing with here. What if we were to pour boiling oil into the... Hey, hey, call back, call back, call back, call back. I need the, I need the, I need, I need inspiration, the inspiration. I need guidance here. All right, no, no. I, um, that's a D, D4, right? Yeah. I cast guidance, guidance on Demovin. Uh, I just touch his sh shoulder, I'm like, you, you okay, bud? And just cast a guidance, and you just get a plus one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to be the one uh, to roll it. He's going to be the one to roll it. Yeah, but I, he got plus, I got plus one. Oh, he has got he's got to do the plus one too, or he's gonna roll the. Guy yeah, he he rolls he rolls the d four along with the. Uh, oh, yeah. so I don't roll. I just cast it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. With an guidance? eighteen total because of two inspir uh two from the guidance, it was a sixteen, but uh. What can I recall of liches? Liches, um, usually like. They're they're a very powerful arcane being that they have to use a lot of um, like weave energy in order to sustain an undead life. Um, but they also like put a lot of time into crafting a phylactery in which they house their soul. So if they were uh, if their physical body were to ever perish, they will just revive at the phylactery and they'll be completely like they were before. Um, it's not a transport type thing where they have to like their old body has to go back to the old phylactery in order for it to happen. It just happens. As soon as the main body dies, the phylactery begins constructing a new main body for the soul to be housed into. And then after I think it's like eight hours or something like that, the lich emerges from the phylactery completely reborn um but right, so you know that this that. this is probably not that um because it again it's not a a body going to where it needs to go to reconstitute itself this seems more like reinar's body became some sort of insect like life form and Apparently there was a lot of them because there's a lot of super tiny tunnels and they're all like we're talking about the size of pencil lead. Tiny. Can we can we pour boiling oil into the holes? <laughs> you can certainly try, but where are you gonna get boiling oil? I have oil and I have light. <laughs> light is not create <laughs> fire. I have lanterns. Do we have a they have fire. I can pour oil. They um, can pour oil. I can they have lanterns. They have oil. I have a tinderbox. I have a tinderbox. Ha uh, we're in a town. They got to be able to cook their food. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, they do have a cooking fire. You saw the smokestack of it before. And yeah, there is a place where they can go and like cook their meals and such like that. I mean, but. it's a thought. Um, if you would like to, uh, yeah, you're you're more than welcome to. I'm not saying no, you can't. <laughs> I was I saying you lantern. can certainly Just try. Saying. I kind of need my lantern. So. <laughs> Don't you have a tinder box in your? I do. Oh, yes, I have a tinder box as well. Where did he get the acid from? It was a vial of acid. Like that's something you can buy. Like um. Like store uh, shops and magic shops and such like that like it that's it's a it's a common item that you can get in D D robofish see how many i get i get in boulder's gate <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah vials of acid are really easy to come across i mean they use boiling tar as a weapon on castles and stuff so why not i just think it'd be a waste of resources they were already that burrowed into the earth by the time we cracked the shell. They're 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 too deep for that oil. Damn. Oh well, that's upsetting. And also too, I've... like the tunnels were super super tiny, so the oil might not go down like the way you want it to. It's just a thought. It's a good thought. It's a good thought. they pour they pour lead into boiling lead into ant hills. 
and come out with these I, massive, huge. Yeah, I love those videos. Uh, oh my god, things. they're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> like the idea of shopping for adventuring supplies at a hardware store. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, some things you could get like a ball bearings and a ham. Oh, yeah, I have a hammer, a crowbar. <laughs> yeah. you can get a crowbar. Of I got a vial. We, we can so do this. <laughs> they're yeah. they're they're in plastic bottles labeled cleaning supplies, but it's still acid. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can we just drown them? <laughs> I I don't know. Think that will work, but I'm like, just pour wa a whole bunch of water down and drown them. Okay, water is okay, but boiling oil isn't. Oil is sometimes thicker. Depends on the milk you. Wouldn't the dirt just eat the water? Yeah. As you wish. Whatever. I was just throwing out <laughs> ideas. I think that this is a kind of this uh, earth is ruined because of him fulfilling some deal with some, some god or some deity level being that he had to say at the end of his life. I just wouldn't trust the land with these things in it. That's my take. Well, we do have a delivery to make, so. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find out where this guy was living and take all of his jewelry and shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, give me an investigation check. Uh, nineteen. Easy enough. Um, with the uh, help of the uh, townsfolk. Um, they are able to help kind of point you to where Reinar was. Um, they lead you to the southern end of the, um, hold on. They, they lead you down to the southern end of the, uh, right there, of the village to the long building at the end. Um, and when they open it up, um, uh, you're expecting, like, gold and jewels and a bunch of supplies and everything like that but when the door opens up you see most of it is like crates and barrels um there's Any like a couple of like durlap bags that seem to have like what seem like furs and stuff in them um you go and open up one of the crates and it seems to have like a shipment of ale or like clay jugs of uh oil in a couple of them like oil. there's uh <laughs> there's um Couple in a couple of like the uh, the barrels and stuff, it's filled with like dried meats, or there's one that's filled with like um, pickled fish, and you know stuff like just a variety of a whole bunch of different things that um, you would expect just regular merchants and stuff like that. Um, but as you kind of take a uh, ask around about like any type of treasure or jewelry or gems. Um, they actually do kind of take you over to an area where Reinar himself was like resting and sleeping and by his bed there is a uh, small jewel box um, that they kind of point out and when you open it up your heart flutters in a delight and glee as you notice that there is a handful of pretty good sizable gems in there. How ornate well, is the box? Uh, the box itself is mostly wooden, but it has some, like, golden, like, inlay type things, like the corners and, and, like, hinges and stuff look like they're, like, you know, maybe gold or something like that. It's fancy, but eh, not it's extravagant. Presentable. Yeah. I'm gonna steal some ale, j a jar of ale, just because. Okay. I'm gonna tuck the box away <laughs> into my pack. Alrighty, easy enough. Is there I anything else anybody else would like to do? I look for well, food. Hey, 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 no. Um, so how much ale do I steal? Um, I would say like with how big the jugs are, you would only really be able to get one if you're trying to be stealthy about it. And if you are, give me a stealth check. Um, and a hallback. No. Um, as you go we need to, to be stealthy about it. We just um, save well, them. Well, as. Jin and Hallback begin to go and make movements towards taking some ale and food. Um, the elderly couple kind of <clears throat> kindly adventurers. I, I understand that you you may be needing some of those supplies, but uh, as I had mentioned earlier, we're, we're going to need all the supplies that we can get our hands on in order to get where we need to, to relocate. Oh, I'm just to. bringing this to you. Here you go. 
<laughs> put it down. I just put uh, it down. I put it down. I'm like, I'm like, I put it. I put this. I put uh, one of the uh, rations. Put, picked up one of the rations. I I put it down. I'm like, good point. You look like you <laughs> could use you. a drink. Here, I was bringing it to you. Uh, On I his way it, out, but it is way too early in the day for this old geezer to start drinking. But thank you. On it's his way out, Demovin's gonna grab one of the things of ale and start drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the old man just kind of. Uh, uh, doesn't really say anything, who, but he seems kind of. Who do you owe your life to? You can part with <laughs> one. One singular thing of ale for the four of us is fine. I, you, I suppose you'd be making a good point, but. In, 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 enjoy. Uh, fine, in return, fine. he's going to take a few of the rations that he had, like three or four of them, and just give them to them. No, I don't take cool. anything. I just walk out. <laughs> no, no. To the. To the there. Thank Alcohol you. for food. That's a treat. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I, um, I take a quick moment to, uh, look around for Emily and the family, uh, because I'm genuinely curious. Um, you actually do not see them. Maybe we need to go tell them it's okay to come back. Or I'm gonna, probably. I'm gonna shove the jug of ale into Hallmark, uh, into Hallmark's hands. It's yours. I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just take him like, okay. I, I, just, <laughs> I, I also take a, a pop the cork off and take a big sip myself. It's not... surprisingly cold. Um, you suspect it's probably because of just like with it being stored in like in shade and in a barrel and in this particular um, ceramic jug. It just, it seems to have a nice chill about it. Um, it's not exactly fresh. You expect maybe it was brewed two, three months ago or so. Probably was meant for consumption, you know, maybe a week or so ago, but it's still pretty good. Uh, the age just adds healthy. more flavor. It wasn't yeah. stored in like a bad tail. It wasn't stored in a bad environment. There you go. I just, I just, I just take, a, I take a good swig because I want to warm. I like it. I like me to mail. <laughs> it is cold and it is sharp and it, it, it it buzzes your head nicely. Give it a big shake. Anyone want some? As, I'm, as we're walking toward the road, I guess. <laughs> I am going to go uh, do some shopping. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go do. <laughs> shopping <laughs> where? <laughs> yeah, so uh, no he's just going to walk off to a more secluded area. Unquote, I'll be back. Unquote shop. I gotcha. I'll be back. I, I need some time to reflect on some things. Oh, you go. Right. You go enjoy your time with Emily and the family. I was just want to go look for him, look him by the road to see if they're still there. Really yeah, go talk to him. Tell him it's safe to come back. By the time you get back, I'll be done. <laughs> I'm gonna start walking back toward where we hid the cart. Because we okay. got. If it's midday. If it's I swear to God, if that cart was a weapon. Town, we, we still got to get to town. <laughs> so. Yeah, Ginger's gonna follow. Okay. So, um... You, uh, Jin and Ginger begin walking off in, uh, towards, like, the, um... Southeast-ish type, um, area, and, um... Hallmack goes eastern, or western. Fuck, I can't remember. Direction. <laughs> Y'all go off in directions towards your uh, goals and um, do so uh, amazingly. <laughs> um, haul back after a while. You actually do come across um, Emily, Mary, and Harold. Um, they're actually slowly and trepidatiously making their way back towards the village, um, saying that they had heard some loud noises before, but now things were kind of calm and they were checking to see how things were going. They're delighted to see that you're alive. Um, they love hearing about the news that Reinar is now deceased. However, they are worried to hear that they're going to have to relocate and such. And Emily actually seems a little bit distraught about that, um, saying that she doesn't like the uh, their other town. Um... Jin and Ginger, you eventually make it over to where the um, the horses are at. Um, give me investigation checks to both of you. I hit that pretty well. <laughs> yes, you did. 
Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, it. Thirteen. Thirteen. And Jen. Jen. Same. It takes you quite a while to find the uh, the carriage, but you do find it. It, is, it was very well hidden. Um, the uh, the supplies are untouched. The horses are happy and merry. And now I need Hollow Mac, Jin, and Ginger to please go into the waiting room. Oh. Uh, okay. Bye bye. Waiting room, here I go. Because I already know what you're doing, Demovin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, as soon as you get over into a, uh, nice secluded area away from, like, prying eyes, I'm guessing a little bit more into the woods and such like that, uh, what yep. do you do? I'm going to summon my, uh, my patron. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to call upon him. As, um, you, uh, call out upon, uh, your patron, the, uh, familiar sensation of the, um, light, dusty sand kind of fills and permeates the air around you, um, as he slowly materializes before you this hulking visage of a Dao, um, just, uh, this floating, massive creature, uh, two times the size of a normal Dao, just encrusted in jewels and bedazzled in the finest of uh, clothing and finery. Just a big old smug look on his face as he looks down at you and goes, I'm guessing you were able to get some more of the payment for this month. Um, he, he's going to reach into his cloak and pull out the box. Ooh. These people did not have much. Well, perhaps they Perhaps they could make themselves useful to you, he said, nudging at the scroll. There's mm. a young girl here that would make a fine warlock one day, should you break her. Well, I'll definitely keep that in mind. I'll keep an eye out on them. Thank you very much for that. Now, let that. Let me go ahead. That's a pretty little box right there. He takes it up, like, in between his two fingers, the size of this box, which, like, was big enough for you to fill both of your hands. Um, this little box between his fingers looks about the size of a tic-tac. <laughs> yeah. uh, he lifts it up above his head and opens his big old mouth, his obsidian glass-looking teeth, just bedazzled in, uh, bedazzling in the sunlight. He drops it into his mouth and with a couple of crunches, turns it into a fine powder and swallows it. Hmm. No citrines in this one, but he's also then spot. he's also then knowing that that was probably the least of it. He's gonna pull out the diamond and be like, "What about this?" Oh, now look in there. See now, bird. That's what I'm talking about. And he snatches up the diamond from you, tosses it up in the air, and bites it like out of the air, almost like a dog snacking a treat out of the air. Kind of like I reminiscent the to the to the trick that you did earlier with the pizza. <laughs> like he just tosses it in the air and it oh, bites it out of the air. And the crunch, you notice the, the, the sound of the crunch actually hits your ear sharper and louder than all of the others. And he just kind of like takes both of his big hands and rubs his big old belly and just goes, oh, mm -mm. nothing satisfies like diamond. That's so what do you think? Bird. Delicious. I, so what do you think? Should I mark this town as yours or keep moving? Well, I think they did pretty good. <laughs> Chalk them up. All right, you got it. Good job, bird. You know what? With that, I think I'm satisfied for the month. Go ahead and start collecting for next month. I'll see you then, bird. Oh, bye bye now. And he <laughs> fades away. Uh, then he's going to walk up to the town center while they're uh, still off doing their thing. Kind of pull out the scroll and read the incantation. All right. And with that, um, they all unknowingly become yes. <laughs> cool. 
All right, there welcome, we welcome back, welcome backs. Um, so you all um, eventually are able to make your way back. Uh, Hallmack, you kind of take a moment with um, Emily, like popping her up on her shoulders, because she seems a little distraught about, um, you know, having to move to another location and such like that. And you, you pop her up on your shoulders and kind of run around a little bit. She spreads her arms out like an airplane and kind of giggles a little bit. Um, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check, I would say. Okay. Yeah, boy, there goes my dice. Um, it rolled... <laughs> Well, that's not helpful at all. Dice that just went onto the ground. It's rolled a natty one just by rolling on the ground. <laughs> well, we don't count ones on the ground. Uh, it, it needs to land on your rolling surface, so go ahead and re-roll it. Uh, nine. Much better. Plus, uh, my perception would be three, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, 12 total? Um, that's enough to notice. Um, while she's up on your shoulders and is laughing and giggling, you kind of notice that there's a moment where she pauses. Like, she's up on your shoulders going, <laughs> Hey, interesting. I'm like, what's up? Are you okay? <laughs> uh, huh? Yeah. Uh, faster, faster. <laughs> I, I just start running faster a little more just to try to entertain her a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh, Jin and Ginger, um, you are able to get the, uh, the horses, um, you know, bridled up to the carriage uh, easily enough and start riding it uh, down the road towards uh, back towards that town. Um, and while you're going, you actually end up running into Hallmack and Emily and her parents. Um, you see that Hallmack still has or has Emily up on his shoulders and is kind of running around with her, letting her have fun as uh, the two parents just kind of look on fondly and such like that. Um, go ahead and give me perception checks, you two. Nine. Six. Yeah, neither of you notice anything. Also, 69. Nice. <laughs> uh, neither of you nice. really notice anything out of the ordinary, so you just kind of continue along. Um, offer to give them a ride, so you all hop into the back of the carriage and um, start making your way back into the town square where you see Demovin. Uh, standing there, waving at you all. Um, yeah, I was gonna you know say, where he is. waving yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not like not waving <laughs> friendly. Just being like, I'm right over here. Like, no, here no, I no. Am. I'm definitely waving dumbly. I'm waving like an idiot. I'm <laughs> like, hey, it's like full yeah. body, full <laughs> arm, wacky waving, inflatable arm, failing demo van. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna run up to them and I'm gonna be like, I have good news. Oh. Yeah. This town will be protected. From what? From how? Anything, really. How? When I went shopping. Pardon? The silence is so loud. <laughs> you bought some kind of like a protection spell or? I spoke to a certain deity that I worship, maybe? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Well, that's cool. I, I honestly don't know what to say for this, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> this is William talking about. Let's just know. let's just call it divine intervention, okay? <laughs> <laughs> With Jin being a magic user too, he kinda like, oh okay. Nope, you know, like this happens every day. Yeah, sure. I I, I think back to uh, a certain thing about my sword that I'm like divine intervention? Okay. I I can understand that. <laughs> I mean, because he's used to like clerics and you know, that sort. But... I had my fair share of divine interventions or dealings. <laughs> Nothing's phasing Ginger at this point anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you have become accustomed to this world of chaos that we live in. Oh, oh another weird thing. Okay, I'm more than the one? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> is weird is uh, meeting uh, these these uh, four birds <laughs> and a rat today. And yeah. A bird yeah, to, to speaking him to a god. Book characters. Bird speaking to a god ranks pretty low compared to that. 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I guess we continue. I guess we continue on. Um, um, I guess I'll take the reins this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, how are the horses holding up now that they've had time to like sit around? And... Oh, they're they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Their wounds seem to be like naturally, slowly but naturally healing. And in this world, that's to say something like you can see it happening. Um, um I guess we take a short rest to uh, while we're on the on the road. Uh, if, if anything, if I can say what? anything for the, for the team. Why not short rest in the town so that way we can hang out and meet some people? Drink oh, some ale. Ew, socializing? Socializing? Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did kind of put a hole in then. Does anybody have mending? <laughs> I'd put a hole in that part. <laughs> you know. I will see what I can do that for the house. <laughs> <laughs> mending made it look cool. I, got, I can. <laughs> I can get a few, uh... Might want to patch the floor, too, and then do something about the giant eggshell. <laughs> um, I would say, Halmec, um, the damage for this is way beyond, um... Yeah. Like, I don't mending think, cannot I touch this. I was about to say, like, I don't even think I can mend that. Yeah, no, it, it would take <laughs> the actual repair. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a broken house and a half. And a half. <laughs> Like Turn you go up with breath. mending, you like you rub your hands together, pre prepare to cast mending, and you place your hands on the walls, and it just kind of crumbles a little more. It's okay, it's okay, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. You see, one problem rose, but it was already solved. Reinar's dead, so they can just go live where he was. There you go. <laughs> and they get all the stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, and then they don't have to leave, so they don't need all of the rations, and they cannot be so stingy with their fucking beer. <laughs> you don't even drink. I guess. I guess. Um. I, yeah. I guess we should just short rest because uh, we're all pretty bad, battered and beaten a bit. So you're, uh, Demovin. You're gonna go and uh, while this short rest is happening, you're gonna go and tell the uh, like the elderly couple that they don't have to go anymore. Yeah. No. I'm gonna go tell them. Yeah. That the uh, the town will be fine. Okay. I, I guess I tell. Uh, Hey, good news. Uh, actually, I guess you don't have to leave. Yeah, maybe their grass will be actually be greener, and you can actually the map won't be so dark. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily just gets this really uh, excited look in her eyes. Goes, really? We don't have to go? Yay! You're the best. And she hugs you. Aww. My my <laughs> heart is warm. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, is there anything else that you all were wanting to do in this town? Um, I don't really know what else we can do personally on my on my end. So anybody yeah. who is undergoing a short rest, you can roll some uh, hit dice. Um, you have the hit dice are equal to your character level, and they are dependent on your level as well. If you want have any injuries that you want to recover using the hit dice, you can uh, choose to use them now. Um, you will recover half of any used dice on long rests. So, like, if you use one die now, you'll get that die back after your next long rest. Okay, so I have... So I use only one of my hit die to give me HP? Yes. Okay, that's a d10. Yeah. So go ahead and give a d10 a roll, and whatever you get, that's what you heal. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. Um, I rolled an 8, and that will probably put me back over my HP. There you go. Oh, excuse me. Bless you. There you go. Fully healed Holomac. Woo! I am also fully healed. Yay! Green, I was, I was also barely winded. <laughs> oh, I I literally just one point over my max HP for that. Okay. Oh, nice. Alright, well, 23 hit points each. Hell yeah. Uh, Jane, I'm what back. are you going to do? I'm back up to full health. I'm back. Nice, okay. nice, nice, nice. Alright. And with the short rest completed, you all gather up into the back of the cart and start heading down the uh, southern trail once again. Um, Hallmack, you said that you were going to be the one to uh, take up the reins this time, so go ahead and give me a survival check as you try to navigate back to the main road. Survival. Okay, let's see. Do not fail me now, D20. 
So you all head in towards a direction that you know for certain, without a shadow of a doubt, is definitely the main road. Totally didn't take a long turn anywhere whatsoever. You're definitely heading in the right direction. You're totally heading towards Smithson. And it is there that we are going to call it for the evening. And thank you all so very much for being here. Next uh, session, we will be getting into the town of Smithson. Our uh, team will be able to complete this quest. They'll be able to get their massive payout and begin another new adventure. Who knows what is in store for our team as we get to Smithson. But I do want to say to each and every single one of you, thank you all so much for being here. I had an absolutely wonderful time, and I hope that you all did too. Um, Question about what XP? XP request. Um, XP, we are not doing XP. We're doing milestone um, leveling. So basically, I will let you know when you all level up. Noted. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Um, and with that, I will turn it over to my players so they can give a little bit more information about themselves. So, um, without further ado, Jin, is there anything you would like to say? No, I just want to say thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week. I can't wait. Woo! Ginger? I hope y'all like angst. <laughs> <laughs> Follow my brother, at, uh, Capistara. Uh, Hallback? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> it's me, William, again. Um, I guess you, most of you probably know me. Um, I, it was really much an honor to be here. I really hope all people will make it next week. I have a dinner plan with some co-workers, so that, that may, I might as well announce that now. I don't know, it's supposed to be happening at, what, 7 o'clock? Uh, around my time, which would be, in right now, 6.36. I think I might, might be okay when I think about it. If that's the time we're actually put to your normal schedule. Um, yeah, we'll be ending like around this time, usually every every week. Yeah, and uh, and the dinner place to go uh, eat is also like down the street from me, too conveniently. So I'm not nice. Really worried about it. Cool. So, and we and, and if need be too, we can end a little bit earlier. Um, like I'm actually ending like a little bit earlier today than I normally do, just because I'm kind of hurting and I'm hungry and I'm getting a headache. So, <laughs> um, and plus this was a good, to, uh, yeah, and plus this is a good place to call it right here too. Um, so, yeah, if, if we need to, you know, like, ever have a, a day where we need to end a little bit early, that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, but well, yeah, everybody yeah, follow, great. uh, William, uh, follow Hallmac at William underscore Brobine on Twitch. Give, give him a follow as well. And, uh, Demovin, anything you would like to say? I'm not sorry for Demovin's actions. I will never be sorry for his actions. <laughs> yeah, just Emily had it coming. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. No. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> coming. And follow Demovin at Bunny or something on Twitch or, as well. Or, or don't. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so very much for being here. Uh, thank you all to all of my amazing players. Uh, we wouldn't be able to play this game without all of you. Um, thank you to all of the hard work that you all continue to do. Thank you for being here as well. Um, I do greatly appreciate each and every single one of you. So thank you all. I, I appreciate you and I love you and I will see you next week. Okay, bye players. Bye. 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 I will kill everyone and then myself if Emily gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, chat. Thank you all again so much for being here. I I absolutely love this game. I I really do. Dungeons and Dragons to me has always just been my all-time favorite game to play, and I'm really loving how chaotic and just wacky this this adventure has already been. Um, huge thank you to Cat Treats. Thank you so, so much for all of the amazing support today. Like, holy shit. Thank you so much. I, I really, really appreciate you. Um, but thank you to everybody for being here. I do greatly appreciate each and every single one of you for being here. Um, but unfortunately, ladies, gentlemen, and my non-binary friends, it is unfortunately that time once again 
or I must bid you all adieu. However, do not be going too far. We, as always, will be going on a raid, and there in the message, it, or there in the chat, is my raid message. It is an all user friendly message, so even if you are not subscribed to the channel, fret not. You too will be able to fill our raid targets chat with the pigu love. And speaking of raid target, we are going to be going and saying hello to the cool Mike show again today. I am his what mod, and I oh. Shush you. I am his mod, and I kind of feel like I need to raid him. And plus, he's going to be doing some fun shenanigans in DVD, and it will be awesome to kind of chill with him. So thank you all again so very much for being here, and until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends, do not forget to love each other, but most importantly, you have got to love yourselves. And I adore each and every single one of you. Thank you all again so very much for being here, and until next time, may she bless you all, and may the fog be kind. Goodbye, everybody. I'll be seeing you all again this Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be jumping back into the fog for some No Mither Monday. Thank you all for being here, and I will see you all again very, very soon. Ooh-woo. Bye.